Good morning, Kitten Brigade. Ensign Kitten here. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, Vivi. Hello, who else was here? Sir Fetish Fancy. Hello, Radioactive Orca. Hello, anyone else who's lurking in the chat. How is everyone? Twist, I'm halfway to get to bed. <laughs> Wait, what time is it that you're going to bed? 7.28. So we have maybe, like, what, an hour or two? An hour or two? Because I know you go to bed pretty early. All right. Uh, let's get going on this. You know, I keep saying that we're close to the end, but I, I snuck a peek at my um, achievements. I snuck a peek. And I only have 6 out of 16 achievements unlocked. Um, so, but the, the achievements are hidden, so I don't know what they are. So I don't know if they're like chapter achievements, like story type ones. We're halfway. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, we might not even really be done yet. Uh, nowhere near being done. It, it just feels that way because it's like the fifth story, but... I don't know why I have it in my head that the, this is supposed to be the last story. Because I, oh, you know what? Because they said in the in the game that it's supposed to be a, the last story. And then, the, and then they went around and were like, this is the true story. Or the fourth story was the last one, they said. And then they turned around and were like, no, 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 that's not what happened. And so they they presented the fifth story, which was a correction of the fourth story. What did they lie? Well, they technically lied about like they technically lied about like the maid and stuff like that and her role in this. So, and like how she's Giselle and there really is no white-haired girl. I don't I don't know. Like the white-haired person is supposed to be Michelle, not Giselle. Is the maid still a good girl? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming she's supposed to be. Um, backlog. I don't know what we're doing here. The line are both Giselle. Okay, we're talking about the maid. Why don't we stop there? It was a wonderful story. Okay, so the maid is trying to convince us not to uh, pursue the upcoming bits of the story, which is supposed, which I guess is supposed to be like super tragic. How has your stickler been? I've been good. Um. I slept okay. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get it. I didn't get like a ton of sleep. I think I probably slept like three, four hours, maybe. Uh, I lost any overlook over this story. Like, you don't know what's going on in the story. I just know that we're on our like we're on the journey to discover um, who the re the maid really is. I think that's kind of like that's kind of like the the. The main gist of this whole entire game about finding out who who the maid is really or who the witch is i guess maybe as well and i cracked my controller more what are you talking about like your ps4 controller this is the only controller i'm aware that you might have hold on i'm gonna grab some water yes how, how did you break your controller did you like purposely like get mad one day and you rebroke it how did Log's birthday go? Uh, it was quiet. Like it was very uneventful. Like we didn't, we didn't, we didn't really do anything, uh, big because, you know, COVID and all. So we didn't like invite anybody. <laughs> as much as uh, we probably would have liked, or he probably would have enjoyed that more. You know, having a actual party and doing something exciting. I have mine in two days. That's cool. Are you going to do anything big? Are you going to do anything big? Wait, don't you become an adult then? I raged a while back at Neo 2 and I didn't... I don't throw it, but I just tried to break it apart. <laughs> Baby! I don't think I've ever, ever, ever gotten so mad at something in a game that it made me want to break like a peripheral, you know? Like... I don't want to break my stuff. <laughs> Classic BB. You turn 12. Ah, uh, okay. If you're turning 12, then uh, move along. You're not allowed to be here. <laughs> There's a crack now at the mic port. Oops. Oh, is that why you can't use the mic part of your controller? Maybe it's time to get a new controller. How old is the controller? 
Or is it the original controller that came with the, the PS4? I think the one that came originally with our PS4 was like starting to function not so great, so... I think? I can't remember. Or it may be still okay. I don't know. I use a, I use a newer controller. Today I died in BB and I was angry. <laughs> no! BB! Why? Why are you taking it out on your controller? Maybe you need to find something else to take it out on instead of your controller. Or I guess this could be an excuse to buy a new controller. I have never broken a controller just wore the joystick down to the nub. Yeah, I have a... We didn't do it, but I... We we, we were given an old controller that was used by um, our friend's kids. <clears throat> and it was like heavily abused, so the... What's it? The, the grips on the controller were like totally worn off. Like practically chewed off somehow. I don't know. Ass cold blood. I don't rage. I'm just too strong. I don't know. I feel bad about like breaking my own shit. It's like I'm, I'm not. I don't, like I don't want to have to spend money to like <laughs> buy new new stuff. Um, so yeah, maybe I would get mad at the controller if it was the controller's fault for mucking up and making me die. Like like it was not being responsive or something. That's why I don't throw it. It's the one that was with the controller, so it's four years. Oh, you mean like um, the controller came with your console or smash it on the table? But still, <laughs> BB, the fact that you're able to like crack it in your own hands is scary. <laughs> I'm not, I'm going to be more hesitant to like shake your hand now <laughs> after COVID anyways. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, it was a wonderful story. They overcame their troubles and lived happily ever after. Is that not good enough? Maybe not. The sad piano. The poor maid has been stuck on this position. <laughs> We're going. It could not be worse than where we are now. All we have to do then is erase the now. Throw everything away and start over from where it was better. You were able to bear them because they weren't your tragedies. And that goes for more than just me. Actually, as a matter of fact, those words apply even better to her than me. The ending is already set in stone. It's already happened. What point is there in watching it again? All it accomplishes is making me relive it all. The ending has not been written. We are both here now, which means our end still lies ahead of us. Then... Can I ask you to promise not to let go of my hand no matter what? No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand. Now I understand. That was a request, even if she didn't perceive it as such. In place of a verbal response, I squeeze her hand in mine. I know where this tale is heading. Toward tragedy. All the other doors we wished ended in tragedy, and ours is no exception. Perhaps what's waiting at the end of this one is even more dire than I imagine. How much more does dire does it get from the fourth story, which technically was their story, but it was a made-up version of their story? So it's going to be even worse than the fourth story, if you guys remember how that ended. It was like them dying at the hands of the villagers or something. The villagers came in and died and- or no! No, no, no. Michelle died at the hands of the villagers, thinking that um, Giselle, or the white-haired girl, had died, and then, uh, and then the white-haired girl woke up. It was like it was like a it was like a Romeo and Juliet kind of moment, <laughs> and and then she finds that he was killed by the villagers, and so like I can't remember how she did she kill herself somehow. I can't remember the comedic ending. No, I don't remember. Woohoo, tragedy. I have broken mouse before because the battery died at a bad time in Dark Souls. <laughs> Wait, you played a- hold on, hold on. Mouse? Mouse. You played a mouse and keyboard in Dark Souls? That seems like- well, I guess I don't really know the community very well. I don't know if people prefer mouse and keyboard versus a controller. I don't know. I, I seem to encounter more people who prefer the controller. Maybe I'll ask people that. It's like, people, do you prefer mouse and keyboard or do you prefer controller? 
She pushed a stealth nuke. The original DS port did not have controller support. Oh, okay. So people were forced to play on um, mouse and keyboard when it did port over to the PC. Oh, interesting. Interesting. So you were forced. Did that kind of feel awkward playing it that way? If you had some experience playing Dark Souls or other other games? The door to our past. Wait, wait, I didn't click anything. The door to our past swings open once more, behind which lies the end of me and the beginning of her. Wait, so Michelle dies and then she starts up. So oh, I remember uh, the witch came along and offered her um, uh, everlasting life to keep coming back, reincarnating in the hopes that she could reincarnate uh, when Michelle also reincarnated to try and meet him again. And then she agreed to do it. So that's why that's why Giselle keeps living forever, kind of. I know I still don't see a problem with mouse keyboard. I don't know. I've never tried it, so I've never tried it. But uh, I guess it just feels awkward sometimes in like um, third person views when you're not playing a first person game uh, to play uh, to play on the mouse and keyboard. First time playing DS was with mouse. OK. Did you prefer it that way? I'm assuming for Seal Wolf though, you probably would have preferred a controller. You seem more like a controller kind of guy. A month had passed since the night with the rose. Right on schedule, the monthly delivery arrived, but it was in a letter that would dr or in it was a letter that would dramatically change our lives. My father, Antonin, had fallen ill and died. I presumed it was the witch's doing, but she was silent, refusing to respond to my questions. If it wasn't her, then he must have died naturally. It seemed more than a little tasteless to celebrate someone's death, but good taste and reality do not always agree. I was extremely relieved to hear the news. The man had raped Giselle, he had tried to have me killed, and now he was gone from this world. I had been waiting for this moment for years. His passing had another effect as well. My death could be revoked. Many years ago, my brother had told me that when he succeeded her father, he would welcome me back to the Bollinger estate and I could be part of the family once more, which meant this letter signaled the end of my banishment. Um, <clears throat> not sure how to feel about it. Yeah, rejoicing doesn't seem really appropriate, but this means you can return home now, right? In theory, my brother is set to take control of the estate, so he should be accommodating. I am going to write a letter, have them send us a carriage. It is much too a long a distance to walk. All right. I'm excited. What should we do first when we get back to the capital? Oh, I know. How about you stop by my place? My mom and sister won't believe their eyes. I wonder like, how her mom and sister are doing, because I don't know if she's ever had any contact with them. Um, wait, that's the story of, uh, an Aaron and Levi DJ? This, what, this context here? I don't know. <laughs> DJ, what does DJ mean? My time in this mansion was almost at its end. The future I had only vaguely envisioned was now within my reach. I had always spoken of this moment predicated with eventually, like it was some kind of unobtainable fantasy. But now that it was practically a reality, I realized I hadn't actually given it much thought. Oh, Dajinshi, okay. Wait, like, the whole, like, coming back to life thing, Vivi? Really? Oh god, please, lol. <laughs> hey, are you still awake? I am. Not a great night for sleeping, huh? Are you thinking about your family? It all seems so unreal. Yeah, it does. This house is like a desert island cut off from the world, which makes everything feel kind of like a fairy tale sometimes. Even what we have. From time to time, I get the feeling that nothing is real. That the outside world is just a figment of my imagination. That my entire life only ever existed within these walls. Are you nervous? Maybe I am. I always thought that when this day arrived, it would be more cathartic. I'm sorry. 
I'm finally able to take you back to the capital, and I can't seem to get past my own negativity. It's only natural to be nervous. I am too. I haven't spent nearly as long as you living in this mansion, but I know how you feel because I feel the same way. Not knowing what the future holds, it's scary. You know, I was thinking, I would be okay with staying. I mean, I would love to return to the capital and I miss my family dearly, but even if I never get to see them again, in no way would I consider myself unhappy. I honestly think I've got a pretty wonderful life. If you're not comfortable going back to that house, and you're just saying you'll endure it for me, Giselle, there are other paths we can take. You could live with your family, or you could remain here in the mansion. Not at all, no, I want to. No matter where you, I go, you'll be there with me, J Michelle. It's true, I am nervous not knowing what the future holds, but not in a scared something bad might happen kind of way. It's more of a jittery, excited anxiousness. I'm confident the two of us can overcome anything, no matter what obstacles may come our way. Together, we can create an even more wonderful future. Don't worry, Michelle. The future is nothing to be afraid of. You make it sound like I'm paralyzed with fear. Hehe, <laughs> but you are, aren't you? Hey now, don't give me that look. Once again, she's the one pushing me forward. I will make sure you have a good, happy life. Thank you. Hehe, <laughs> what? Nothing, nothing. I'm feeling kind of sentimental, thinking about how we've only had got a little time left here. It wasn't perfect, but it was an important part of my life. Indeed. Say. Yes? Um, I, uh, well... I think I could handle it right now, probably. It? Oh, use your head, you little... I don't follow. Ugh, how can you be so dense? I mean, you know, touching and so forth. You know, uh, take the next step. I'm saying I'm feeling up for that right now. <sighs> it's not proper for a woman to bring up that subject, is it? B but I did kind of ask you to wait. And I feel bad leading you on for so long. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm. You're shaking. I'm really emotional, that's all. You don't need to force yourself if you're not ready. I can wait as long as you need. Besides... Besides? Never mind. It's fine. There's no need to rush things. You don't need to worry. Yeah. Um, yes, they are reborn again and again, but never get together like being on the other faction in war and so ah okay yeah that's kind of the story behind giselle she kind of agrees to the witch's curse i guess or i guess it's a curse i don't know what to call it i guess it's kind of a curse and so it's her being reborn each time waiting for michelle to, to see him you know but they never he never seems to be reborn at the same time that she is or something like that or he's never being reborn i don't know what's going on with that or one dies when the other is just about born uh, is it good i started watching lean uh serial experiments lean yes it's a very um it's a very good series it's it's pretty it's kind of a mind fuck though that's pretty messed up <laughs> <clears throat> I stopped watching not licensed stuff, so old animes are rare. Not licensed stuff. Wait, Lane is not licensed? I mean, I guess it could have fallen out of license, but it was it was licensed at one point, so... I wrote two letters. One to my brother, and one to my mother. <clears throat> one so Giselle could return, and one so I could be myself. To demonstrate who I was, I had to pr prove that I was not cursed. For failing to do that would not only bring her grief, it might become the final crack in the identity I had built up for myself. I had to convince her that I was neither demon nor angel, but a human man who had fallen in love with a human woman. 
<clears throat> I don't know. You literally find the neither neither series on YouTube in a playlist entire. <coughs> Sorry. I don't know what you mean by that um radio. Oh, oh, was wait. Uh yeah, Lane is a licensed series. Maybe in North America, I mean on streaming sites. It's an old series, so you might be hard pressed. Like, like streaming sites may be hard pressed to want to carry an older anime that's like over a decade old. You know what I mean? So, but I think it's it's worth a watch. It's worth a watch. It's an it's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Crunchy Road doesn't have it. Um, who used to how uh, who used to license it? I thought Funimation owned it. So you might find it on Funimation. I'm curious now. Who holds the license for this? Yeah, Funimation. So if you go to Funimation, you can watch it free there, probably. I think. Licensed by... Oh, Austra Australia is Universal Sony. North America is Funimation, and UK is MVM Films. Hmm. Well, if you have access to Funimation, you might be able to watch it on Funimation. Funimation.com? Can you, can you access the site or no? If not, then, uh, then I don't know. I don't know where you can watch it then. I'm sorry. Geoblock, oh, okay. Well, there are ways around the geo blocking, but <laughs> if you can't find it anywhere, then just YouTube. Yeah, it's old enough that you probably find it on YouTube. <clears throat> Sorry, <coughs> got in my throat. Okay. However, I was too foolish to realize that the future I envisioned was nothing but a fantasy. Had I been able to grasp that, then maybe I could have been taken her somewhere far away, where no one knew who we were, where things might have turned out differently. It's been really foggy out lately. I'd rather if we left when it was clear. It would be terrible if the coachman rolled the carriage because he couldn't see where we were going. If there wasn't so much fog, I would probably have been able to see little columns of orange evening sunlight fighting their way through the trees. But the milky white mist seemed to swallow up all the light, leaving nothing for the surrounding area. It was rather dreary weather. I wonder when they'll be here. Although, if they never do show up, that's okay too. I was finally able to return to the capital with Michelle, to see my family again, and that was wonderful. It was like a dream come true, but it wouldn't disappoint me if that didn't end up happening. I didn't care where I ended up, as long as Michelle was there with me. That's all that matters. I should probably close the windows. <clears throat> Sorry. Oh my god, I can feel my like throat like drying up. The coach isn't likely to show up at night, I don't think. I reached my hands out to shut a window, which is when I saw something wavering beyond the heavy mist. Light? And it wasn't just the one. Looking closer revealed several more flickering spots. They moved up and down, slowly, but rhythmically. As more and more came into view, my mind began seeing them as people carrying torches. They're coming this way? Could they be our escorts? Back to the capital? Though, what? As soon as the thought, there sure are a lot, popped into my head, something whizzed by, past my cheek. What? Huh? What was... Huh? Why? What? It was an arrow. Giselle! What? The arrow had flown through the window and pierced the opposite wall. Had Michelle not walked, knocked me out of the way? Giselle, Giselle, are you okay? Uh, I'm fine, but what? Why did, what's going on? Ugh. Never mind that. Right now, we need to run. Huh? Well, wait, Michelle! Now, there's no need, time to talk. Stay out of sight of the windows. Got it. He grabbed my hand and broke into a run. A relentless storm of uh, arrows showered through the windows we had worked so hard to get open a year ago. This wasn't what we had 
uh, gone through all that with what's this wasn't what we had gone through all that effort for Ugh. once I open the front door run we have to get as far from this house as quickly as we can what was happening why did we have to run why were those people firing arrows at us? With the wave of questions came a wave of fear. I couldn't say anything. The sheer terror had frozen my jaw in place. Get ready! I nodded, squeezing his hand tight. I knew it would just be another obstacle that was safe escape, but I didn't want to let go of his hand. I was afraid that if I did, I would never be able to hold it again. Imagine morning streams. I know, right? Hello, hello, Jillian. How you doing? Posted the link on Wee Batakas. Good job. Are you all right? I'm fine. But how? There are people in front too. Damn it! Why? Several arrows were sticking out of the floor before us. Beyond the door, which Michelle had managed to shut almost immediately, rang a cacophony of whoosh thump, whoosh thump. We were... We can't escape? Why? What's going on? Damn it. With a deep scowl, Michelle barred the door, and all the while the arrows kept flying. The panic in the air kept growing thicker. I, I don't understand. How did they... Oh, only a handful of people even knew about this place. Ah, This is all my fault. It's because I told the villagers about this place. They think a demon lives here, not a human. So, so they're here to tear down the house. That they made weapons, bows, just for this? I don't... Ah. There was a deep rumble and the ground below us shook. I almost fell to the floor. They're trying to break down the door, it seems. Michelle, I, I'm so sorry. That This is all my fault. Because of what I did. No. What? It's not your fault. It's mine. Michelle? I challenged her, and because I did, she made my curse real. What are you talking about, Michelle? Uh, uh, this way, run. I have to go since so I say hi. I'll watch <laughs> Alright, see you, Julian. I'm sorry that you have to go, but uh, thanks for stopping by to say hi. I hate Amazon. I love life. Okay. Um, I love lamp. I want to buy a Blu-ray, but it's double the price on any other platform. Oh, okay. So, why do you hate Amazon, though? You don't like buying from Amazon? Because it's cheap? <laughs> Michelle dragged me through the mansion's corridors until we reached a chamber with a stained glass window. At the far end of the room sat a small door. Well, where does it lead? I had been aware of the door's presence, but I had never gone inside it. Something about it seemed somewhat different than the rest of the house. I wasn't sure how to describe it exactly, but it felt like shadows had taken root here. The observation tower. A tower? But but if we go up there, we're putting ourselves in a corner. It doesn't matter where we go. They have us trapped. But there's a chance that up here... He didn't finish that thought, however. He opened the door, leading me into the tower. His face deathly pale. Oh no. I mean, they kind of died at the tower in the fourth story, so... Because they dumping? I don't know what you mean by they dumping. I love lamp. Why did you use that character for uh, the A? <laughs> uh, oh, the other hand, it's half the price, but I will never use Amazon. We started running again around and around the spiral staircase, making our way toward the top. Athena, you wins. Thank you so much for that to host. Really appreciate it. That's a meme? Uh, the- oh, the lamp one? Wait, it's a meme to use the- the- the characters for A? Hey, I saw you streaming! Hello! Hi! Good morning! Um... At regular intervals along the wall were rectangular windows. A layer of fog still lay thick across the land. Peering out into it made me feel like we had been thrown into a dream world. Do you have the lamp, brother? I don't know what meme this is. Uh, the, the, or the, 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 I guess the meme I was quoting was from The Office. 
I love lamp, you know? If it weren't for the orange spots of torchlight surrounding the mansion, the silhouettes holding the torches... Is that armor? Appeared to be knights. M michelle tell me, why do you think this is your fault? What is your curse? Y your curse? Isn't just the color of your hair and eyes, is it? There's more to it, isn't there? There's something else, isn't there? Michelle's gaze was firmly directed forward as he frantically, frantically led me up the stairs. We were breathing hard and the sound of it echoed against the tower's stone walls. Our panic hearts were beating so hard, I was afraid they might be able to hear it outside. Hi, cool streamer. Hi, cool person. Taco. Tuesday. How you doing? But wait, there's more. It's a meme about moths and their obsession with lights in it. Oh, uh, okay. No, that wasn't what I was uh, quoting there. <laughs> I'm still in the meeting, but I'll be back in like 10 minutes. I love your voice and the vibe of the street. Aw, oh, thank you. Um, good luck with your meeting. But yeah, thanks for saying hi. Uh, eventually, we made it to the top. A pile of discarded rope lay unceremoniously at the door, fruit of the door, presumably once used to seal it shut. Wait. A rope to seal it shut? I don't know how you would use rope to seal the door shut. I guess if you were tying it to the knob and stuff? The door itself was deeply weathered and rotting in places. It had obviously been left sitting in disrepair even longer than Michelle had lived here. What is this? Inside? Ugh. Frigid air nipped at my skin, and it wasn't a pleasant, refreshing kind of cool, but a bitter, oppressive cold. This room felt unlike any other in the mansion. This is an observation tower? You can't even- There once would have been windows allowing you to see in all directions around the mansion, but all that remains now is that tiny opening near the ceiling. If we hide out here, then there's a chance they may not find us. <sighs> It sounds like they broke down the door. Don't worry, they won't find us. And when they give up their search, then we can get out of here. I'm sure it will turn out alright. Uh, why? I don't know why he thinks this, because they got covered all the entrances. They saw them try to escape, but then go back into the mansion. So where else do they think they are, you know? They probably are not going to give up. Is this a scene from the dream of the first story? Was this what happened in the first story? I don't remember. I thought the first story was just about the children. The two children. So, no, I don't think so. Oh, the dream. Um, No, she... Uh, I remember she was... Uh, in the first story, she was talking about a story that her father told her. The white-haired girl. So that was like a childhood story. So, but I don't think so. It was just about a girl in a tower. But I guess it's making allusions to this tower here. Michelle's voice was quavering, as was his hand in mine. Michelle. We huddled together, feeling each other's warmth in our arms. My free hand clenched his shirt for dear life. I'm sorry. What? I'm I'm to blame for this. It's my fault you're in this mess. The pain you had to experience, you are being sent to this pal place, what's happening now, can all be traced back to my being born. I'm so, so sorry. Why was he apologizing? Why did he insist this was his fault? Why wouldn't he tell me what his curse was? Why were people trying to kill us? Right, right, those people were trying to kill us. Putting into words like that made the fear that much more real. The arrows they fired weren't threats. Sorry, I gotta turn this down a little bit. They meant to kill us. Michelle. But with Michelle trembling in my arms, I couldn't bring myself to ask these questions. What meaning would those answers even have with death lurking so close behind us? All I could do was pray. Pray that he was right, that they wouldn't find us and we would be able to escape. However... Over here, there's a door and stairs leading up. Ugh. My hopes were shattered by the sounds of voices from below. I could hear a faint clanking of armor, our grips on each other tightened, and our trembling intensified. Fear swelled within the tower, making us its slaves. Ugh. Giselle. 
We were both terrified, and who wouldn't be? Fairy tale heroes could be magically courageous in the face of overwhelming danger, but they weren't real. The fear of my impending death, drawing nearer and nearer with each passing moment, almost drove me to madness. I couldn't think clearly. My heart was having trouble keeping up. My head was a big white mess. We were supposed to return to the capital, start a new life, finally obtain our happiness. It was right there at our fingertips. Enough happiness to make up for Michelle's ten years of isolation, and enough to erase that nightmare from my memory forever. What had we done to take, have that taken away from us? We just loved each other and wanted a quiet life together. Nothing outrageous. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. But what scared me the most was being separated from Michelle. But, hey, Michelle, what are those people really doing here? They. If what they're really after is money or valuables, we can offer them everything in the mansion. We don't need any of it. If they don't want us to return to the capital, we can tell them we'll stay here. They might be willing to talk it over. I don't care if I lose everything else, as long as I have you, I can survive anywhere. All that mattered was that we had our lives, so long as the two of us still breathed, but... DEATH! DEATH TO THE UNHOLY ONE! DEATH TO THE HERETIC! DEATH TO THE WITCH! Uh. Ah. Despair hung over us like the fog outside. There were no heretics, no witches, no unholy ones here, but they would probably never listen to us. The moment we stepped outside of this room, we would be dead, no matter what we said. M michelle I... I'm alright, I'm alright. I'm okay, Michelle. Uh, I'm not scared. You're here with me, after all. I'm fine, it's all fine. So please hold me until it, it's all over. Please stay with me. Uh, finally to speak. Michelle? He wasn't looking at me, though. His unfocused eyes were directed upward, not toward any particular point, but wandering aimlessly. His purplish lips appeared to move as though he was speaking, but no sound came out. Hey, Michelle, are you alright? Come back to me, Michelle. I grabbed him by the shoulders and shook, but he didn't even seem to notice. No matter how many times I called to him, he didn't look down from the emptiness above. Michelle! Giselle. Finally, after far too long, his gaze slid down to meet mine. He looked defeated, exhausted, and cornered all at once. I was scared too, but his fear seemed to have consumed him entirely. Please, hear me out, Giselle. I never thought anything good would become of my life. I never thought I would find anyone who would truly understand me, who would be happy to have my love. And for that, I hated the world. I was in constant torment, living in the shadows. But then, a single ray of light shone down on me. Michelle. You, Giselle. You delivered me from the darkness. I'm scared, Miss Giselle. I'm terrified. I used to think my life was meaningless, that it didn't matter if I lived or died, but now I can't stop shaking. That's perfectly normal. I'm scared to death too, but... But what scares me most is losing you. M Michelle. I should have noticed. Noticed his arms were tensing up, noticed, and stopped him. So please, allow me to repay you. I said I would do anything for you, so let me do this. I haven't given you anything. I haven't done anything for you. So give me one final chance. <laughs> Michelle! This is a weird picture. <laughs> the first screaming after him. This uh, soundtrack is interesting. Good morning, Azirlin. How are you? What are you doing? Get back in here, Michelle! What? Why? The door! I can't open it! I shoved on the door, trying to go after him, but it wouldn't budge, even the slightest bit. It was as though there had never been a door there at all, merely a wall disguised as one. It wasn't someone holding it shut from the other side, either. I pushed and I pulled with all my might, but I couldn't even manage to eke out the tiniest crack. Michelle! Michelle! What did you do to the door? Come on, get back in here! I, I don't want to lose you either! Say something! Michelle, you're out there, aren't you? 
please, please don't do anything rash. They're going to kill you if you're out there. Giselle, the witch told me. What? That she would ensure your safety. Michelle, she... She isn't real. There's no witch talking to you. It's all in your head. A figment of your imagination created to alleviate your loneliness. Rest assured, she does not lie. Michelle! Please listen. You are a wonderful woman, Giselle. Spirited, true to yourself, deeply sympathetic. You are not to blame for how difficult your life has been. Most of the fault lies with me and a bit of bad fortune. But that's all behind you now. Once this is over, you can start anew. What are you talking about? So, so survive. Live a good, fulfilling life. Move past this, live your life, and always love your family. I know you can do it. That is my wish for you. No, no, I don't. I don't want that. I want to be with you. No one else but you. I don't want to let you die. There it is. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Death to the heretic. Get, get back in here, Michelle. Open the door. And my choice is to live on without you. I'd rather. Your scars will heal. You'll find a nice man and have a wonderful family. Why? Thank you, Giselle, for bringing light to my world. Don't say that. But if, if there's a next life, I hope you don't mind if I pray that we're able to meet again. That we can find each other once more in another world. Michelle! Uh, Michelle. It is our holy duty as knights of the church to deliver punishment unto the heathen who made a pact with the devil. Come on, Michelle, open the door. You are sentenced to death, your body to be hanged upon the cross for three days and three nights, wherein your unholy flesh shall be purified by the fires of heaven. Why? What are you doing here? Open the door, Michelle, please. Listen to me, you can hear me out there, can't you? You shall now be executed. Ah, do you have any final words? Who? Who is it you're sentencing to death? Michelle Bollinger, or a demon child, naturally. Or a witch, perhaps. Please open the door. Why won't you open it? He is an unholy and impure. He's a perfectly normal human being and a very sweet man. I'm... Yes, I am the witch. The witch is in here. I am the one you want to execute. Kill me. Execute me. Now I see Giselle. This world. Kill him. No. Pokey pokey. Death Christ. Ah. So many blades pierced my flesh. A sword in my chest, lances in my arms and shoulders, arrows in both of my legs. I could hardly even tell what hurt anymore. There was an unpleasant hiss sound in the tower, almost like a heavy rain. It was the sound of my blood spilling onto the stone. Red. It was red just like anyone else's blood. It didn't flow into unnatural patterns. It didn't churn into black demonic shadows. It didn't cause anyone who touched it harm. It was just ordinary red blood. Regardless, this body was still cursed. It... it had to be. I couldn't hear Giselle's voice anymore. I hoped she was safe and alive. I prayed that at least she would be protected. That the witch would keep her promise. Ah, it was getting dark. Light was quickly departing from my world. Darkness everlasting dragged me down into its pits. I believed in you. That's Cushing Sun. Um, the saddest part is that it was his brother. Oh, was it? Was that really his brother? So his brother was a knight? Interesting. I'm for sale. Wait, I'm, I'm missing parts of chat above here. Uh, I'm so sad. I'm for sale. Bye bye. <laughs> I will buy you. Uh, will will love with love. Okay, okay. Forty one euros. <laughs> is forty one Bitcoin or what? Uh, my love is worth more than zero point zero one euros. Okay, ten bits. 
Is this a spooky game? Um, not really, but it is like a... It's, it's more like, I would have to describe it as more like... Uh, a tragic lo series of love stories, I guess. Tragic love stories, like horrifically tragic. Uh, I'm asleep now. Alright, good night. Good night, Vivi. Good night. Have a good night. Thanks for uh, stopping by. <laughs> tragic love stories. Yeah, I didn't know that it would be like just tragic love stories. I thought it, I, I actually initially played this game thinking it would be like partially horror or have like psychological horror, which I guess there was a little bit of it, but it's mostly like tragedy. <laughs> Gothic kind of tragic love story. Is that fine? Michelle? Michelle, hey, say something. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on? What's going on here? No, this can't be happening. An impossibly heavy thud came from beyond the door, and with it, Michelle fell silent. See, I don't know if it was his brother, though, because he wrote a letter to his brother and his mother, so I guess we'll find out. I guess you know, Azirlin, what's what happened here, for sure, but we haven't found out. Uh, completely what's going on. Then intermittent squelching sounds as something slid down the door. Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, 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 this can't be, why? Why? I pounded on the door with all my strength, but still it refused to give. The skin on my hands eventually going raw and beginning to seep blood. Why? Why should Michelle have to, have to be killed? Tell me why? Take me with you. Please, don't leave him behind. That man isn't a witch. He isn't cursed. I... I'm cursed, not him. So don't hang him. Don't humiliate him like that. Kill me instead. Please. Again and again, I pounded on the door, but the self-described knights on the other side seemed to not even be aware of my presence. They seemed unable to hear my cries. Their armor clanking with each step, they began to descend the staircase, and with it, I could hear the sound of something being dragged slowly across the floor. No, don't take him away. Stop, don't take Michelle away from me. I'm begging you. But my pleas were in vain. My hope was for naught. The knights took him away. Took him somewhere out of my reach for all eternity. Don't take him away from me. Damn, now we can actually pull the butt plug from the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carrion. Michelle. After much, much too long, the door swung open all on its own. It happened so unceremoniously it was hard to believe I had actually been trapped inside. I had no idea how much time had passed, but the chill in the air suggested it was deep into the night, and with the biting cold, there was the stench of blood. Why? Why? Michelle, I never, I never wanted this. Ah. 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 I don't know, she's crying. I can't, I can't do the cry. <laughs> you didn't understand it all, Michelle. You didn't know the depth of my feelings for you. You didn't know how intensely I wanted you. How fervently I w loved you. I was never going to be able to find someone else and live happily with them. It had to be you. The thought of anyone else touching me terrified me. You just didn't understand. I don't want... I don't want to live in this stupid world. The time I spent with you truly was the happiest time of my life. We never did get to find out why he was killed. They, they left that intentionally almost vague. I remember. I remember everything now. You died on that day. You were killed. You disappeared from this world and left me behind. That's right. I remember. I remember the pain, the agony of death, and the fear. I did indeed die that day. You refused to listen to me. Do you have any idea how it felt? To feel you dying from the other side of that door? Giselle, I wanted you to take me with you. Is this what you wanted so wanted to see? My memories, the traces of my life on this earth, and there. In order to find your truth, we need more of the story. 
Very well then. If you want more story, I will tell you more. What comes next is both a continuation and the brand new tale. Oh my god, there's more to this story. <laughs> so, the maid's tale. Okay, so there's even more stories. So what, there's more beyond the fifth story. When you've heard it all, I expect you to commend me for not forgetting how to smile. This sure is sad for comedy. <laughs> Um, oh, this is like a series of stories. It just keeps adding. Yeah, it, there is a series of stories. So when you start the game, uh, it takes you through time and takes you through like a different uh, kind of story that takes place um, associated with the mansion. So it's, it has to do with the mansion and I guess the mansion is kind of like cursed and stuff. Um, we haven't completely cut through the darkness yet. An arctic wind blows past me. At the same time, I'm gripped with an overwhelming urge to break down into tears. Perhaps this is the solitude she felt for so long. I have to face this. I have a responsibility to her to do so. And I have to atone for being such a misguided fool all those many years ago, convinced that I was doing what was best. The Sixth Thor! <laughs> Uh, 1099 question mark? So I guess this is the story of Giselle. Wait, this is my tale and the maid's tale? Oh, okay, this is from uh, Giselle's point of view. So she's calling herself the maid. Uh, save? Let's just, let's just save this case. Deposit your biomass. So crude. That's another carrying one. <laughs> oh my god, that's crude. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't know. There's all sorts of weird quotes in there. You have, uh, you have radio to thank for all those weird quotes. A tale of a foolish, naive girl. Looking back on it now, I'm ashamed of everything. But I will tell you my story in its entirety without embellishments. I ask that you please not let go of my hand. The only things the knights left behind were a garment and a large pool of your blood. The pool had seeped into the fabric and it was beginning to dry. When I clenched it in my hand, it made soft crackling sounds. The oppressive stench of blood or death lingered in the tower. Michelle, there's no point in life without you. You know that, right? Have a wonderful family? You know I can't do that. Hey. Michelle, answer me. Come back to me. I don't care if it's as a ghost. I just need you here with me. Come back to me. Talk to me about nothing and about everything. Be irritated with me when I do something stupid. Scoff at me whenever I tell a bad joke. Trounce at me at chess again. Put your arms around me one more time. Come on. I'm begging you. If you won't come back to me, then I'll go to you. I don't care if that's not what you wanted from me. This world without you is meaningless. Dying won't guarantee you get to see him again. He spends all his time refusing to talk to me, and when he finally does, he begs me to save his love. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Rather disappointing, to be honest. Who, who are you? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Quite deft, aren't you? Within these walls, I am everywhere. And you've heard of me before. What? I... I have no... Heavens, you are slow. Is that pretty head of yours only for decoration? What? what? But, but no, there's no one else. You might be thicker than these walls, my dear. Although, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You never did believe anything Michel said about me. You thought he was going mad. <laughs> this is brilliant. No, there's no way. It, it can't be. The Cursed Witch? Morgana? Oh, you even know my name, do you? It would appear my legend has survived longer than I expected. I suppose I should thank all the humans who passed it down for me. 
you actually exist? I most certainly do, my dear. As I recall, you don't believe in the supernatural, do you? But it's hard to deny when that very witch is talking to you right this moment. Michel was not even slightly mad, my dear. I told him he was better off without his sanity, but he refused to listen. He wasn't deranged. His surroundings were. His environment, the people around him, his whole world. Can you imagine how dreadful that must have been? To be the only sane resident in the world gone utterly mad? It's a miracle he managed to keep his head. Remember what you just said before he died, my dear. You said it was all in his head. You said he couldn't tell the difference between illusion and reality. You said he had long since gone insane. Shouted it at the top of your lungs. N no, that's not what I meant. Ah, poor, poor Michel. If only you had believed him about the witch. I feel bad for you too, though. You have my pity. What did you ever do to deserve this? Oh, and just to be perfectly clear, I played no part in either your or Michel's misfortune. The only force to blame for that is fate. You were a good, honest, joyful, lovable woman, and look at how the world treated you. <laughs> May I ask you something? Was it you who sealed me in the tower? Yes, it was. That was what Michel wanted. Once I told him I would grant his wish. So I did as he asked. Though it looks like that ended up causing you even more pain. How tragic. So, you're planning to die? Are you hoping to reunite with him in heaven? That plan's destined to fail from the outset, my dear. God teaches that suicide is a sin, and you'll go to hell for it. Then, I will not kill you. Why not? Because I swore to Michel that I would save your life, hee <laughs> hee. Poor, poor Giselle. If you have any other wish, I'll be happy to grant it. I can't bear to see you so miserable. A wish? You have but a single desire right now, to see you once more. Isn't that right, Giselle? Are you saying you can make that happen? You'll bring him back to life for me? The forces of life and death are outside of my realm. That is God's territory, or the angels. However, I can guarantee you this. His reincarnation? No. His reconstruction. His reconstruction? Yes. You can meet him again. Not in this life, but in some future life. Just imagine it. Finding your beloved again after overcoming so much tragedy. Ten, twenty, maybe a hundred long years from now, you're finally reunited. Doesn't that sound marvelous? True, unparalleled love in its purest form. What do you think? Just because you can bring his soul back doesn't make it Michel. I wanted to be with him, that brusque, impenetrable, slightly immature but gentle as a butterfly man, the man who sincerely, deeply loved me. If it's the same soul in a different body, can you still call him my Michel? Hehe, hehe, ha 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 Ah, my apologies. You beat me to the punchline. And you did so with such ardor you threw me off balance. You're exactly right. The idea that if your love is strong enough, you can both be reborn and have exactly the same relationship is utter fairy tale nonsense. You must be the same people to have the same love. Which is why I'm not promising his rebirth or reincarnation, but his reconstruction. Your wish can become reality, Giselle. As long as you wish for it with all your heart, it can come true. I'll wish for his reconstruction as well. You have a witch asking to make this happen, my dear, so you can be confident that it will bear fruit. And if you wish for him to remain as himself, if he truly loves you and he too wishes to reunite with you, your wish shall be granted. Will you really wish with me? I most certainly will, my poor, pitiful, dear Giselle. I shall offer up my most heartfelt prayers for you. I'll, I'll wish for it. 
Until the moment of my death, I'll keep wishing for us to be reunited as the same people. I can't guarantee your reconstruction, though. What? I only said I guaranteed his. Michelle's is the only reconstruction I will wish for. I will not ask for yours. Why not? You're not looking at a benevolent, wish-granting goddess or an angel with a an magic bow and arrow. You're looking at a cursed witch. Then how am I to be with him again? I can offer you but one option that will allow you to reunite with your reconstructed Michelle. T tell me! What do I have to do? You must live. Here, with me. Live with you? What do you mean? It was Michel who resurrected me, but he could not serve as my guide. I have work to do, but I cannot do it alone. I need a guide to assist me. Because as you see, I have no body. In this, if this house did not exist in this world, then perhaps I might be able to give myself form. My soul's form. I don't understand anything you're saying. You don't need to understand. All I need from you is for you to show your utmost hospitality to the people I'm expecting to show up at this mansion someday. Entertain your guests? That's right, my dear. Michelle isn't the only one whose reconstruction I'm wishing for. There are others. Several heinous sinners. So, I want you to serve as a maid and watch over them when they arrive. And until then, keep the house in good condition. What? What are you scheming? Is that something you truly need to know, my dear? All you need to do is wish. Pray for the day your beloved appears before you again. For the day he wraps his arms around you once more. One word, Giselle. That's all I require. Do you want to see him again? Do you want to hear his voice again? I can promise you, you'll have your happiness back. Ah. What reason is there to hesitate? There isn't one. Or are you simply going to give up? <laughs> I wonder, what would happen if you said no? If you disappear from this world, how would Michel react when he comes back? Will he be sad? Angry? Or will he forget about you and fall into the arms of another woman? N no he can't! Then make up your mind. Will you come with me, or will you throw it all away? I, I, I... <laughs> if I had given it a little thought, I would have realized she was manipulating me. That she was just telling me what I wanted to hear. But I believed her. I accepted her proposition. As unbelievable as it sounded, my desire for it to be real overpowered everything. It was impossible not to grasp at the straw she was dangling in front of me. That was all I could do at the time. The witch's voice also had an inexplicable power to it. It made me believe, as outrageous as it was, that she could really, or uh, that she really could bring you back, reconstruct you. Maybe because I had seen her turn a door into an immovable wall. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm missing Jai here. Like Mathena for being awesome. I did nothing. Oh, you're just as awesome. Reunited after a hundred years, I know. It's like hardcore dedication. Hello, my favorite streamer, Lambrick. <laughs> okay. Wow, okay. <laughs> Meh. Okay, I have to go. I have a long meeting for work. I'll leave a lurk. You guys have a happy day. Alright, see ya, um, Athena. I, I probably missed her there. But, um, thanks for hanging out for a little bit. And hope your meetings go well. Or maybe because I had heard her disembodied voice. But I don't think those were enough to explain it. My guess is, she had me under her spell. That was the moment I became the maid. But I assure you, I was at that point still the same Giselle you knew and loved. The sound of the rain never seems to stop. Am I hallucinating it, maybe? From the moment I lent my ear to the witch's sweet temptations, the mansion underwent an in unimaginable transformation. No light shone through the windows despite them still being un unobstructed, not morning, day, or evening. In fact, the concepts of morning, 
day and evening did not seem to exist. The darkness resembled that of when the windows had all been sealed off, but there was something more fundamentally unreal about it. Like it was hovering over a vast, all-consuming abyss within a constant haze of malice. I felt like I had been cast into some unknown realm, and that was why there was nothing beyond the windows. And the house was not the only thing that underwent changes. I, too, was no exception. In the blink of an eye, all my basic human urges vanished. I stopped feeling hungry, and I no longer needed sleep. Naturally, I was bewildered by what was happening to me, what I was turning into. I think I'll take a look around. Maybe there have been other changes. Um, is you Inky? Wait, what? What is me Inky? And hello, hello radio. How are you? So I meandered through the mansion's halls. My originally in original intent was to explore the entire house, but I found myself drawn toward one room in particular. That's right, your bedchamber. There was no light, not a trace of color remaining in your chambers. But the bed was the same shape, the walls the same texture, the curtains the same design as when you had been alive. Michelle, I'm praying, I'm always praying, that someday we'll meet again. Oh, there's something hidden under the bed. What could it be? It's that painting. Hello, how are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? Thank you for asking. I never did get to ask why he got so angry about me seeing this. I'm sure it's something he didn't want to be reminded of. Perhaps having to do with his family? I was right not pressing him about it, though. What? Ah! It started smiling. The painting? That'd be scary. I'm doing semi-okay. Thank you for asking. Well, I'm glad that you're doing somewhat okay. <sighs> what the? Th did the painting just smirk at me? Oh, oh god. Uh. <laughs> oh jeez, Giselle. What are you doing tripping over yourself? It was just a, a cursed witch messing with your head. No need to get spooked over a taste of sprank. Uh, when I stumbled... I guess I knocked a drawer open. There's something inside. Uh, letters, it looks like? I shouldn't touch these. They're not mine. But... I want something of my Michelle's to have. Something to remember him by. His letters would be in his handwriting. They would contain his words. Please, forgive me, Michelle. I don't mean you any ill will, but I'm going to take these. I must say, there's a, an impressive number of... Eek! What the? What on earth? It's like someone dumped an inkwell on every page, but why? W was this the witch's doing too? Yeah, it has to be. It must have been her. It, it definitely wasn't you, Michelle, was it? a lot of walking around. The front door. I wonder what it's like outside. I can't get it open. What's going on? The bar isn't set, but it won't budge an inch. It's just like up in the tower. I know. The windows. This should open. Then I can... What's going on here? What the heck is going on? It's like there's an invisible wall in front of the window. My hand won't go any further. <laughs> this is rich. What else can I do but laugh? What in the world? This is madness. Ugh. Hurry up, Michelle. Return to me. And get me out of here. Please, get me out of here. Ugh. I don't know what she expects Michelle to do, because he'll return back to life and then maybe meet with her, but she's going to be, like, you know, trapped to the house as it's made. There was no conditions for breaking out of uh, being a maid, right? 
I had no idea how to explain anything that had happened to the mansion, but it was clear enough that I was imprisoned within its walls. I was all alone in a nebulous sphere of bleak darkness, and beyond its walls lay void. The layout of the house remained unchanged, but I felt as though I had wandered into a twisting labyrinth. I could cry, but there was no one there to soothe me. All it did was provoke her disembodied cackling, which she followed with. You chose this, my dear. So you need to hold yourself together and keep wishing. My only real pastime was cleaning. I dusted the same corners again and again, swept the same floors, polished the same dishes. One day, I decided I would read the books left in the library. Despite there being more than a hundred volumes, I finished every one of them in what felt like no time at all. My life was a never-ending cycle, day in, day out, day in, day out. The house had no visitors, no one, rather nothing at all set foot upon the property. There were no signs of other life whatsoever there. No birds singing in the morning, no cats sunbathing in the garden, no mice scurrying about the kitchen, no creepy crawly insects. There was nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that broke the long stretches of silence was her voice. Tell me, was she kind to you? Was she friendly and courteous? Because she was quite harsh when she spoke to me. These were the kinds of things she was always saying to me. He didn't show up today, did he, my dear? Are you still praying, my dear? Do you think he'll actually come, my dear? I'm still wishing, just like I promised, my dear. You know why he hasn't come for you, my dear? Because perhaps he doesn't actually love you as much as you thought. My dear. My dear. My dear. Have you lost your mind yet? Shut up! I've had enough! I'm done with you! <laughs> enough, please! Enough already! What's got you so worked up? You love to talk, don't you? So why not have a nice little chat with me? This is not a chat. Maybe not in your mind, my dear. You seem to think chatting only constitutes conversations you enjoy. But I don't think the world's usage needs to be so restricted personally. You're just getting off on watching me squirm. Oh, not at all. You'll have all my best wishes if he does ever show up for you. <sighs> oh, so scary. If you're making that face when he shows up, <laughs> he might not even recognize you. What? You haven't looked in the mirror recently, have you? Go on then, my dear. Just see how frightful you've become. No! The witch was right. I looked nightmarish. My face was pale and lifeless, my eyes hollow, my cheeks sunken heavy bangs beneath my eyes. My hair had lost its sheen, and it grew wildly. I was quickly losing everything that made me recognizable as me, and the thought sent a shiver down my spine. N no this this isn't me. This is some kind of trick. You're trying to deceive me. Baseless accusations. You really must stop blaming people every time something doesn't turn out the way you want, my dear. But but my face was more... More what? More expressive? More cheerful? Brighter? Better? You're right. You never were this gloomy, were you? But right, I wasn't. I was always more cheerful than this. Naive girl. Could you be any more narcissistic? Huh? What you're looking at is undeniably exactly what you look at like now. Time did not do that to you, nor did I. The negative energy oozing from within you is what's causing you to take on this form. Did you think you didn't have any dark, ugly emotions inside you? Did you believe you would always be able to smile, no matter what? Did you assume you were pure and beautiful? No one like that exists, my dear. What you see in the mirror is the true you. Your hideous, twisted heart. If you... If you weren't always being so nasty, this would never have happened. Anyone's heart would be twisted listening to you long enough. So, you're saying Michelle's heart was twisted too? I spoke to him for years. 
No. Hehe. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I suppose I may have crossed the line there. I mean you no ill will, Giselle. Honest. Allow me to give you one word of advice, though. Look at yourself in the mirror often. If you continue deteriorating at this rate and end up looking like a corpse. When Michelle comes and sees you, he won't jump for joy, but run away, screaming in terror. Stop talking. Please, just stop. You know, Giselle, this is only the very beginning. He might not show up for hundreds of years. I can't, I can't live that long. Absolutely brilliant. You still think you're alive? What? The moment you agree to come with me, you cease to be of this world. So don't worry about time, my dear. You can wait as long as it takes. As long as it takes for him to arrive. Hehehe. <laughs> as the witch had suggested, I started checking my appearance in the mirror every day. I wanted to ensure I didn't turn into some horrifying creature. My hair grew, so time seemed to be passing, but I didn't appear to age at all. The flow of time had become perplexingly vague and uncertain. Was it stopped? Or was it moving? I couldn't tell. On occasion, I would practice smiling in front of the mirror. My smile was, after all, my one really distinctive feature, and I was certain you had seen me smiling more than anything. Even if my appearance had changed drastically, I thought, you would still be able to recognize me by my smile. A woman standing alone in front of the mirror practicing how to smile. I'm sure that was quite the comical sight. And that was about how my days went for an incomprehensibly long time. Ten ninety nine. Oh, a couple hundred years later. Ooh, twelve hundred. So, two hundred years later. Okay. <laughs> that two hundred years later. For the first hundred years, years, oh no wait, it was only a hundred years later, because it was 1099 and then 1200. The year is 1200. Uh, I kept track of how much time had passed. An hour, a day, a month, a year, 10 years, 50. But once it had surpassed the person's average lifespan, the counting started driving me mad, and so I stopped. My sense of time began to numb. In place of sleep, I spent my days in a trance-like state. Doing so, I was less aware of the passage of time, which made it a little easier to bear. Suspended in this bubble of time, my mind went out to you. That's not too long ago. I was ten back then. Okay. Oh, more passage of time. Another hundred years later. The next thing I lost a sense of was myself. I lived as a human for 21 years. Okay, so Giselle was 21 years old. And after spending nearly 10 times that trapped in the mansion, I began to feel like that was all I had ever been. That maybe my past was all a construction of my imagination. That, as an otherworldly being, I merely fantasized about being a human. Had I actually had a family? Had there actually been other people in the world? Did cities and villages really exist? Was there ever really a time when light shone through the windows, when we were happy? But I knew if I started doubting everything, I wouldn't be able to maintain myself. And so, I settled on believing one thing. That you, Michelle, were real. That you had been with me, that I had loved you, and that it was you I was waiting for. I tried to always remember that one fact. Great blanket. I'm all ears in now. Okay. <laughs> Another hundred years. My characteristic energy and cheer were disappearing. By then, I hardly ever raised my voice anymore. And in response to that change, the witch changed, uh, seemed to treat me a little nicer. On occasion, I thought I could sense her presence nearby. Like she might reveal her form to me from beyond the darkness instead of only speaking to me. I could feel her sitting beside me. Giselle, do you think you're still Giselle, even now? Hehe, <laughs> I suppose it doesn't matter either way. 
Sometimes I think love and fan fanaticism are two sides of the same coin. What are you implying? Oh, nothing. I have an idea, though. Why don't we remake you some new clothes, my dear? The loom should still work, thanks to your keeping everything in order. That, art uh, that outfit's an artifact of an age long past by now. You know how long it's been? Vaguely, but yes. As we speak, time still marches onward. Not too quickly, not too slowly, but at the same pace as your breathing. Now, on your feet, Giselle. We have plenty of time, so let's make you the perfect maid's outfit. And if we don't have enough materials, we can make more thread from the sheets or curtains. Hehe, <laughs> how exciting. Oh fuck, the user flying back. Following her instructions, I wore gar I wove garments in a style that did not exist in my era. They were quite strange to behold. The old me might have been stricken with fascination by them, but at that point, I wasn't even sure how to rejoice, how to be impressed, or how to be moved anymore. Oops, uh... Sounds like rain again. What year is it? Oh, it doesn't matter what year it is. It doesn't matter where it is. As long as you're there, it could be anytime, anywhere. Where are you, Michelle? What are you doing? I'm still praying. I'm still wishing for you to appear before me. Forever and ever and ever. And ever and ever and ever. I've been praying for so long, I don't even know how long it's been. Before you left, you said you were going to pray too. You said you hoped we could meet again in another life. I'm not misremembering, am I? Michelle, come back to me soon. I love you so, so very much. But my memories of you are starting to fade. What did your voice sound like? What did, kinds of faces did you make? Where did you like to put your hands on me? I don't want to forget. I want to always remember. My memories of you are the only thing holding me together. But they're slipping away from me. How did you speak? What kinds of things did you talk about? I'm losing all these memories. Please, Michelle, come back to me before I forget everything. My beloved master. The thought crossed my mind that maybe Morgana's guarantee that you would be reconstructed was just a lie to trick me into staying here, but I quickly discarded it, because if she had been lying, it would strip all meaning from my very existence. It would take me from my purpose for being here, so I didn't want to accept that possibility. I had no choice but to persevere in my belief that you would return. I had always thought I would be alright, that my faith would never waver. I still believed in myself, but you can be the happiest, most optimistic, resolute person in the world, and you will still break eventually. And I was at the point where even the slightest tap would shatter me into fragments. This is when she starts to get the first visitor. I think it was 1600 when uh, the children, the two um the brother and sister story popped up. Several hundred years after I was enslaved within the mansion, something changed for the very first time. Sunlight, which I had not seen in all that time, shone in from outside. At first, I did not believe it was real. I thought it was a hallucination born of my inner desires. And I thought I must have been co must have completely lost it from my fantasies to have escaped my mind. But it didn't matter if it was an illusion. The gentle breeze blowing into the window felt wonderful. The smell of grass, the chirping of birds, the glistening blue sky. It was like a thousand memories rushing back at all at once, and it brought tears to my eyes. The time has come, Giselle. It is time for you to get to work. And as she always did, the witch's voice crushed my elation dragging me back to reality. 
The image is slightly unnerving for me. This one? Reveling in the sight of the outside was the last thing I should have been doing. For it was that moment that began my true decline. Work? What kind of work? Have you already forgotten? Oh, good heavens. Do you have your head on straight, my dear? As I said, I need you to watch over the house and show your utmost hospitality to those who show up. Someone? This is merely an appetizer. It looks like someone's here. Uh, hold on. I, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. Do the same thing you have been doing. Be a maid. Convince the house's guests that this is a wonderful place. Make them enjoy their stay. Now go on. I'm quite looking forward to this. Uh, gives me a confusing and mentally suffocating sensation, aimless. Like the wishy-washy look of the background, you mean? The bar has been removed. But will the door open? For so long the door had refused to budge. For so long light had forsaken these halls. For so long there had been no trace of life. And now all of that had been turned on its head. I felt like I had stepped into heaven on earth. I know it sounds melodramatic, but so please don't laugh. It was almost certainly a perfectly ordinary slice of nature. Leaves and grass rustled in the wind, flowers specked the earth, and in the distance was a city I didn't recognize. I wondered where I was, of course, but I neither shouted nor jumped in surprise. Instead, I found myself accepting of my circumstances as unnatural as they might have been. As I was standing there idly before the entrance, a carriage rolled up. Egad, could this road be any worse? Or be, be any bloody worse? It's in dire need of paving on top of everything else. Mm, and who might you be, young lady? That outfit. He's speaking a different language. The middle-aged man approached me. From his attire and the way he held himself, he appeared to be upper class. This must be, um, the, uh, the sibling's parents, I guess? The dad? The music too? Uh, yeah, combined with the dead concrete build, plays right into an existential torture. The music too. Oh, this? That's very, um... It's very descript of like how you feel about what, how this invokes those kinds of feelings in your radio. <laughs> are you are you are you okay? Are you okay? However, the words coming out of his mouth were not in the language I had grown up speaking. Could the mansion have moved somewhere far, far away? Naturally, I had no idea how such a thing was possible, and the longer I stood there staring at him absent-mindedly, the more incredulous he became. My immediate mission was to overcome the language barrier. Fortunately, I suppose, I was able to understand bits and pieces of what he had said. As merchants in the capital, my family did business with people from other countries, and as a result, I had learned a handful of words. The problem was, it had been so long ago, I had no confidence whatsoever in my ability to hold a conversation. I... I am... I am a servant. S servant can't say I remember asking for a lady servant, but eh, I suppose these things do happen. Doesn't matter who- doesn't much matter who they sent. <laughs> who are you? You weren't informed? Bloody hell. Off to a great start, I see. Well, what can you do, I guess? Name's Hayden's Rhodes. Just a retired old man. Ah, the Rhodes family. As I'm sure you've already guessed, this man was the Rhodes sibling's grandfather. He was also the first person I served under as the maid. I embrace things. It's good radio. It's, it's good to it's good to take things in stride. For a member of an esteemed noble family, Hayden was a bit on the eccentric side. He only hired a handful of servants, claiming he was not fond of clamor. There was a single chef. A physician, a servant to take care of all the cleaning, and then me, who served as his personal assistant. Whenever he got the chance, Hayden would chase me down and make me practice proper etiquette. According to him, 
I had much to learn. Uh, back to the siblings. This is actually before the siblings, so this is their grandfather's time. So she served um, under his house. He was a, he was I well it just I just literally read it but she served him as the first uh, maid or ma first master of this house. A lot. It's a loop. No, it's not a loop. It's just we're telling her story from the very beginning, right? So now we're like piecing back this, bits of stories that um, are woven into her life, what she went through. Because uh, uh, at first the stories that we 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 observed were her being sort of like the maid, and she was just in the background of it all. And then and now like she's like the main character in, in the story. You are at least technically a servant of the Rhodes family, young lady. So I can't have you going around playing country bumpkin act. Actually, I'm trying to decide what kind of voice to go with this guy. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. And we'll have to do something about that accent, too, while we're at it. I have an accent? Thicker than bloody molasses. Now I have no interest in sticking my nose into your business, asking where you hail from. But while you're here, you must act the part, young lady. Lucky for you, I'm retired and have all the time in the world. I'll teach you everything you need to know about proper etiquette. Uh, all right. Speak up, will ya? N yes, sir. Uh, yay! I finally connected to chat. Were you, were you were you here this whole time, little lost, and you were like desperately trying to like say something in chat? Hi, hello. Hayden did not go easy on me either. In addition to my day-to-day -day du duties, I studied etiquette, the language, proper pronunciation, and formal diction. Anytime I made the slightest mistake, he would shout his dissatisfaction. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that chat wasn't working for you. Uh. Although, I guess, was the stream working, though? At least you could watch the stream. <laughs> Listen carefully. A servant is the face of the house. A servant's gaff is her master's gaff. Always keep this in mind. You are not just the maid. You must always act with elegance and grace. You must always maintain your composure, even if the house is falling down around you. Whatever happens, you deal with it quickly and quietly. Your language must be immaculate. No ums, uhs, or pauses for any reason. Yes, sir. No stammering either. Tori. Bloody hell, you are not going to make this easy, are you? Whose idea was it that Country Bumpkin would make a good servant? I'd like to give him a piece of my mind. I, I, I'm not from the country. Not even slightly. I was raised in the capital. Is that so, eh? A prim and proper city girl, are you? In that case, you should be a quick study. Absolutely. I can learn anything in a week. Tops. Piece of cake. Is that so? All right then. Starting tomorrow, I am tripling your lessons. I, I didn't think this through. In addition to being my master, Hayden was my teacher. When he yelled, he grew twice his size, and I shrunk to half my mind or half mine. But. It wasn't at all an unpleasant experience, because I knew he wasn't raising his voice to belittle me. His instruction may have been harsh, but it was human interaction. There were people around that I could talk to, and that was wonderful. I was starting to regain some of my humanity. Cutie patootie is training! Aw, oh, that cheek buff. Unlike me, you've still got a long life ahead of you, young lady. I don't know what kind of life you lived, but I can't imagine it's been all that easy. Not many servant girls your age without a home to go back to. Which is why... Which is why you need to learn this. Once you've got all the rules and customs down, you'll be able to hold your own at any noble's estate. You shouldn't have any trouble with keeping yourself employed. I'm sure you think I'm just a loud, obnoxious loud, uh, old man, but I believe we met for a reason, so I hope you'll stick with me. I, uh, don't think about you like that at all, master. You're a remarkable man. W one more time. I deeply appreciate your generous consideration, master, from the bottom of my heart. I. I say better. <laughs> More refined. I didn't know much about Hayden's situation, why he had 
retired to this mansion all alone, away from the rest of his family. But anytime I asked about them, he would say... <coughs> Sorry. It happens sometimes. With a melancholic frown. Before long, two years had passed. By that point, my etiquette had improved enough to satisfy his high standards. In that time, the mansion underwent a number of decor changes as Hayden brought in sculptors to work on different areas of the house. He also sealed off rooms that were not in use, such as the observation tower and the chapel. It was a sad thing, seeing areas with so many memories for me falling into disuse, but as a mere servant, I had no say in the matter. In addition, Hayden seemed to greatly enjoy renovating the house, so I watched him warmly. The furniture was all gradually replaced, gorgeous paintings hung on the walls, colorfully patterned um, curtains installed, and a brilliant rose garden planted. These roses come from all across the world. Nowhere else can you see so many different varieties in one place. It is beautiful. Did you know that in the city, people are starting to call the mansion Rose Manor? Rose Manor. <laughs> and to think there used to be nothing but weeds here. Amazing how much it has changed. I never thought I would see this garden turned into something so beautiful. Are you fond of roses, young lady? Yes, red ones especially. Red roses mean a great deal to me. They remind me of a time long past. Given one as a gift, were you? No, I believe I was the one who gave the rose. So, red roses are a symbol of my feelings. They're very precious to me. I gave you a rose as a gift. You plucked it from its stem and placed it in my hair. Am I remembering correctly? My memories are so vague now. I can't even remember the look on your face that day. There... There are some kids I'd like to give roses to myself. Who? My grandchildren. Oh my, you have grandchildren? Aye, though we haven't been in touch for some time. Last I saw them was four years ago, when my... When my second grandchild was born. Oh my god, he said third. He was about to say third, so he knew about the... He was aware of the whole scandal with the uh, the second child uh, being of like the painter's kid. I like white roses. The sweetest girl in the world with lovely flaxen hair. I'm gonna save just in cash. Uh oh. Uh, I think these were decision points. Oh wait, this is locked. Right? She's going to be a real beauty when she grows up. Anyway, they're wonderful kids. And one day I wanted to hand this garden over to them. Each and every rose containing my hope that they'll lead comfortable, healthy lives free of strife. I'm sure your wish will come to pass. Your grandchildren will have wonderful lives. I. The grief of not having you around still weighed heavily on my mind, but I was slowly approaching contentedness. Life with Hayden was slow and uneventful, peaceful and relaxing. I imagined my heart was seeking anything to alleviate its pain, and it found that in, its, in the beautifully remodeled mansion, the garden blooming wildly with roses, and my time with Hayden. I was even beginning to think, this life was enough for me, that I would be okay with this being the end if it meant more of the tranquility I felt. I was like a coward, considering giving up the fight. Please do forgive me for ever considering such a thing. Grandpa knowing one of his grandchildren is half bastard. <laughs> Lol. Uh, Hayden seemed to be in high spirits that day. A gift had apparently arrived from his son, who lived far away. It was a, in it was a tea set, some leaves, and a small jar of sugar. Miss! Miss! How can I be a service master? Brew me a, a pot of this, would you? Be careful not to steep it for too long. You want to get it just right for the best flavor. 
As you wish, master. <laughs> you seem quite pleased. Psh, why would I be? A boy who shunned his old man for years, sends him a paltry gift on a whim? I'm just entertaining his fancy. <laughs> Your tea is ready, master. Ah, what a wonderful smell. Tea and roses are life's best damn spices. Now let's see what that boy chose for me. If it's no good, I'll be sure to write him an angry letter. He looks so happy. He must really love his family. Mmm, it's a little bit bitter. Shall I brew another pot? No, it's not your fault. Must be something in the leaves. Would you like to add some sugar then? There's a small jar of it with this tea set. Now that's some bloody fine sugar he's procured. White as snow, it sparkles in the light. He chose it just for you, master. Bloody hell, what demon possessed him? Alright, give me two spoons then. Yes, master. Here you are. Mmm, ah, splendid. This is some exquisite tea. The sugar balances the bitters of the leaves perfectly. I guess that boy does have some... Master? Arrgh. Master! Master! The, the doctor! I need to find the doctor! Uh, uh, water! Water! I'll get you some water right away. So please, please hang in there. You're supposed to boil the petals? Wait, what does he mean, leaves? I don't know what you mean. What is your question? Rose tea is actually good. Well, we don't know if that was uh, rose tea. It just said some sort of tea. Thanks to the quick treatment pr uh, provided by his personal physician, Hayden survived, but he didn't make it out with much more than his life. He was permanently bedridden by the affair. Evidently, the sugar I had po put in his tea had contained poison. <gasps> what? His dad poisoned him? Or his, uh, not his dad, his, uh, his, his, his son poisoned him? Which had done irreparable damage to his nerves and muscles. Most of his body was completely immobile, except for his left arm. Oh no. Wait, his family tried to poison him? Can I bring you something? Some water? I've had my more than my fill of water. You don't need to wait on me hand and foot. Haha. <laughs> that voice says you need to distract yourself by working. I... Remember what I told you? A noble family servant must always act with elegance and grace. You must always maintain your composure. But... How can you expect me to remain composed? I, if I, if I had only examined the sugar more thoroughly. You never would have noticed, young lady. I examined the sugar and didn't see a bloody thing wrong with it. He was damn crafty, that's for sure. Why, why would he do this? His inheritance, I presume. Something must have come up and he needed money quickly. That's no reason to poison your own father. Blood is nothing but an obstacle to ambition. Or maybe he just hated me. How could anyone possibly hate you? Perhaps that could be said of the me you know. But when you live as long as I have, you're bound to make an enemy or a tool. Mine just happened to be my son. I was planning to give him everything anyway. He didn't have to do this. It all would have been his. Master. Killing me doesn't accomplish anything. But I guess it doesn't much matter. <laughs> Say, could I ask you something, young lady? W what can I do for you? I don't want it to get out that Hayden Rhodes was poisoned. So could you tell ple people that I passed away peacefully with a beautiful nurse tending to my every need? You're not dead yet. Please don't talk like that. You're scaring me. No stammering. 
but, but I'm not saying it'll happen immediately. But I am an old man, and one day you'll wake up, and I'll be gone. This is about my own pride, not my son. The last thing I want is to go out with a black spot on my name. Tell me you'll do this, Giselle. He's never said my name before. Uh, as you wish. Thank you. You're a peculiar girl, you know. Sometimes you seem greener than the leaves in summer, and sometimes you seem like you've seen 12 kinds of hell. And every so often, you seem not of this world. I... Your skin is pale, your hands as cold as ice. At one point, I thought you might be death himself. But I was wrong about that. You have too big a heart to be death. You care too much. You must be carrying a very heavy cross on your back. I... What am I supposed to do? I don't want to lose you, Lord Hayden. I don't want to lose this life. You have someone, don't you, young lady? Someone you're dying to meet again? Y yes but I don't know anymore. I don't know how long I'm supposed to keep waiting. If something doesn't happen soon, I, I don't think I can hold myself together much longer. I was so close to breaking down, and it was you who kept me on my feet. I'm sure you've tried to remain strong in plenty of times, so I'll give you some different advice. A trick for when you think you're losing a hold of yourself. Build a cocoon. A, a cocoon? A sturdy shell to keep your weak inner self safe. This world has no interest in protecting you. Only swallowing you whole. So you mustn't readily expose your true self. You build a cocoon and you play the role you need to play. That way, the real you will remain unharmed. It's not pleasant to hide yourself like that, but it's better than letting the world crush you. But a word of warning, if you spend too long in the cocoon, the real you is liable to disappear forever. You'll be swallowed up by your own protective shell. I feel strange when people call me young lady. <laughs> Never seen her face angry first time. Well, that is because you are a 300 pound bearded man because I'm not a lady. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Was someone calling you a young lady? I hope you find whoever it is before it's too late. Now, I think I'll get some sleep. Yeah, it's about time I remove my cocoon too. This is like a metaphor for something else, or, or you mean like your blanket. <laughs> All this talking's warning me out, or warn me out. Uh, as you wish. Good night, master. See you in the morning. I see you in the morning, young lady. Do you think he wakes up? The next day, Hayden was dead. He had strangled himself with his left hand. How do you- how do you do this? How does one do this? How? I don't- I don't understand how you do this. I should have been more attentive. I should have recognized how much pain he was in. How much it crushed him to have been betrayed by his own family. I should have realized how he truly felt how fragile he really was. And why le oh, because his left hand was the only um, part of him that wasn't paralyzed? He was paralyzed, remember? The poison paralyzed uh, it was like a neurotoxin, so it paralyzed his, um, what do you call it, the, his, his, his whole body, except for his left hand. I fell into a hopeless gloom. I could hardly believe that the quiet life I had finally attained had been shattered in the blink of an eye. Aiden's other servants quickly went their own ways, and I vividly remembered the dirty looks they all gave me. Everyone who knew how he died assumed I had done it. I had no reason to kill him, though, but they had more than enough to believe so, for I had, indeed, been the last person to see him alive, and I held firmly to the story he had asked me to tell. While I was unable to convince the other servants, his far family was far more accepting of the story that he had departed for the next world happily, though that did not make the truth any less heartbreaking, especially since I was the only one who knew it.
Why does this always have to happen? I was happy, but I can never seem to keep a hold of it for more than a flash. Despair always comes marching in to rip it away. What? What am I doing here? What kind of person were you, Michelle? What kind of person was I? <laughs> oh, my dear, you look positively miserable. Why should you despair at the death of some strange old geezer? Morgana, was Hayden one of those whom you wished to be reconstructed? Ha, I have no interest in that wrinkled bag of bones. And if he was one of them, do you really think I would have let him go so peacefully? Peaceful? You call that peaceful? You call his misery peaceful? I most certainly do. And since you do not seem to understand this, the pain of death lasts but an instant. The worst torture can only be inflicted upon the living. Setting two loved ones against one another, manipulating one into taking the other's life, and then forcing him to live with that? The stage hasn't even been set yet, my dear. And you would have me play a part in that? Indeed. You agreed to accompany me. You are here to be my guide. And you're doing a wonderful job of it so far. I, I haven't done anything. Oh, but you killed that old man, did you not? Thanks to you, my wish is one step closer to fruition. What? What do you, what do you mean I killed Hayden? You mean to claim you didn't? Then tell me, who was it that put the poisoned sugar in his tea? N no, I didn't mean to. Your intentions are irrelevant. Everything moves along the path forged by my pat wish. And you shall continue to follow its will. Urgh. You know what? I am done feeling like this. I don't want anyone to go else to go through what Hayden did. And what are you going to do about it? I am done listening to you. Without me, you have no influence over this world. Oh ho. So, I'll, I'll die. I'll take my own life right here and now. I grabbed a nearby knife and held the tip against my breast. My hands were shaking, my heart pounding, my whole body was racked with terror, but... I would have sworn I heard Morgana's gasp. This was one of her weakness, I thought. What are you thinking? Don't do this, Giselle. Don't be foolish. Put the knife down, right now. I'm, I'm done trusting anything you say. Giselle, put the knife down. I miss you so very much, Michelle. I wanted nothing more than to see you again, but if my being Morgana's guide is going to cause other people's suffering, then I can't. It's all over, Morgana. <laughs> is the breast fatal point for the females? Well, I mean, I guess over the heart, over the breast. Especially the right nipple. <laughs> oh no. Huh? There's no blood? Not even pain. Why? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I told you not to be foolish. But you just went and listened to me. <laughs> Such a silly girl. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> Wait, was she, like, laughing? Like, she's going nuts? I couldn't even die if I wanted to. Learning that absolutely crushed me. My backup plan, the one escape route I had thought available to me, had been ripped away. My spirit crumbled and I felt myself sinking into a vast darkness. I began losing my grip on myself, which is when I recalled Hayden's advice. Build a cocoon. It was the only option I had left, my final chance at protecting myself. Although, ultimately, I was unsuccessful in that endeavor, as you know. But by that point, my mind and spirit had all been but lost. Eroded away by the years of solitude, the witch's whispers, the brief glimmer of happiness, and the eternal boundless darkness it had left me in. It was in that moment that all light drained from my eyes, and it was in that moment that the maid was born. 
Um, it's like third grade biology. If the nipple falls off, they fall into a coma. Surprised your teacher hasn't taught you that. <laughs> the educational system these days shaking your head. I'm gonna grab more tea. I will be back. So I'm gonna take a quick stretch break, tea break. So enjoy this music.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, it took so long. I, uh, I decided I was uh, probably too hungry, and so I made a sandwich. I made a sandwich. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably why I was hiccuping. <laughs> I was hiccuping from hunger. Empty tummy. So we're reliving the first story. Enjoy the sandwich. Uh, I had a bite, but it's like, it's gonna be hard to do this because we're doing reading and stuff, so. I haven't eaten yet, so. I usually don't eat, like, when I first get up in the morning. Excuse my eating. But yeah, how's everyone? Okay. Oh, dearest Mel, come over here. I can't remember what kind of voice I had for her um, kid version. I'm good. How is Kittens? I'm doing okay. I'm just uh, cracking open a, a Red Bull. What is this? It's a tropical flavor. It's actually not bad. There's so many beautiful flowers. Now, Nelly, there's no need to run. You're going to fall, and you can't say I didn't warn you. Hello, I've never seen you before. Are you the new maid? Good afternoon, Lady Nelly. That is correct. It is an honor to serve you. Oh, oh, did you do all this? I did not. The garden was your grandfather, Lord Hayden's work. Wow, is Grandfather a wizard? <laughs> Perhaps he was. I am sure he would be delighted to know you like it. Did Grandfather like flowers? Yes, he loved them quite dearly. Wow, I love flowers too! I've never seen a garden with so many pretty flowers. Did you know this kind of flower is called a rose? Just like our name. Why, yes, they do sound alike. Unlike the flowers, you're also a very sweet little girl. Hehehehe. <laughs> Say, what's your favorite color, Rose? I like all colors. But you don't like any the most? That's too bad. Oh, she hid away the fact that red's her favorite. Because she's in her cocoon. <laughs> in her disguise. My favorite is pink. Pink roses are so pretty. Indeed they are. Ah, jeez, there you are, Nelly. Oh, my apologies. Please don't mind my sister. Oh, not at all. We are having the most wonderful time. That's good. I imagine we'll be seeing each other around, so it's a pleasure to... Dear Mel, dear Mel, let's see what the inside's like. Mother says I have my own, very own room. Ah, so, slow down, Nelly. I beg your pardon. The inseparable siblings ran off toward the mansion, hand in hand. It was a heartwarming sight. But the next moment, when they stepped inside, I saw something else. The darkness enveloping the... Uh, enveloping? Enveloping. Is it enveloping or en enveloping? I can't decide. <laughs> en enveloping? How to pronounce... Enveloping. <laughs> enveloping. Enveloping. Okay. So it's not enveloping, it's enveloping. Wise choice. You were asking me. Wise choice. No, I was asking Google. Google, Google, Google Sensei taught me. So uh, Google Sensei already has taught me how to say it. The darkness enveloping the mansion seemed to flare up, the open door a gaping maw to its hungry bowels. The whole house looked as though it was cackling. I, it was, I presume, the witch Morgana's madness taking form, a manifestation of she felt now that her centuries in the making wish was bearing fruit. These two children, 
were the ones Morgana had been waiting for. I am Google. I mean, Google. <laughs> I got back from running errands, and you're still not done. No, I'm not. This story is a long one. A long one. I don't think. I don't think even the stream I would be done. So I'm. I'm gonna stop saying that I'm. I'm close to the end because there's probably lots, loads more to the story. It's only been two hours, two hours and twenty minutes, and I just got back from like a break, like a fifteen ish minute break would you say radio um where i made some lunch because like i was starting to hiccup and so i was like i need some food um a lot happened so we find out that um what did we find out what what was new in this in this stream we're still like kind of oh we find out that the maid um was uh created from her desire to see michelle again Seven-ish minutes? Really? I felt like my break was longer than that, but okay. Um, but yeah, so she, um, the witch basically kind of tricks her into becoming the maid for her house because the witch needed a guide because the witch was saying that she doesn't have a body. So she convinces um, Giselle that uh, if she becomes the maid for the house, that she will make her wish come true, which was to promise her that Michelle, um, she would, uh, that he would come back reconstructed and that she could meet him again. Should I just go play it myself and watch Bad at, and watch Bad at this point? Um, I mean, it's up to you what you want to do. <laughs> but I mean, this game is really, uh, the, the story is really great. So, I mean, you could go ahead and play it. You still have a lot to go through um, in terms of like, the the first few stories so if you don't want if you don't want to spoil it for yourself i i i understand so wait when did that did i read the, that part had i still any willpower to fight left in me i would have taken them by the hands and sent them somewhere far away i would have done something before the house swallowed them up uh well good luck with the rest of the game all right uh see you around julian uh, and uh, good luck with your run with it. I mean, it's not like there's really much to it. There's there's not a lot of choice. <laughs> it's a visual novel, so. But enjoy enjoy your enjoy your story of it. But instead, I just gently lowered my eyes. Misfortune would surely sink its teeth into those two children before long. Pain and misery would befall them. I knew no good lay ahead for them, but my heart had all but frozen solid. I had my hands full taking care of myself, so I let Hayden's beloved grandchildren fall into the witch's hands. I was, for all intents and purposes, Morgana's marionette. Ah, at long last, at long last, it has arrived. The time I've been waiting so long for has arrived. Darling devoted Giselle. I know not how to describe for you the fiery excitement burning within me. Oh, I know. I can tell you my story. Tell you exactly what that mild-mannered little boy once did. You'll be open to listening now, won't you, my dear? And you'll surely understand that I'm doing nothing wrong. Because you're my ally, my trusty servant. You and I, we live in the same world. We're as close as family. Are we not? Yes, as you say. <laughs> so let us curse them, all of them. Let us inflict pain worse than physical torture on them. Let us put their souls on the rack for all eternity. Curse them. Make them suffer. Curse them. Now listen carefully, Giselle. This is a tale of wicked men and my curse upon them. All right, this makes me think that we're not even like, we're maybe like halfway through the game. Because now now the witch has stories of her own. <laughs> I really like this music on the slight vocals. It, uh, this one, this particular track reminds me of Miku. Or like, it, it reminds me of like the, the usage of uh, the Miku program with it. But I'm not sure, so. The witch spat her curses for some time. The bile overflowing from her words, the pure, unadulterated hatred brimming within, consumed me more than the horrifying things they described. She was brutally honest, each word a carefully sharpened blade of animosity, 
How much bitters did you have to carry inside you to become like her? How long did you have to feel nothing but hatred to become like her? I felt like if I let my guard down, I would be consumed by her enmity. It would become mine, and I would grow to despise them myself. All the while, I kept my mind on one single thing. That is what was left of my mind, locked away inside a shell of my own creation. Yeah, Hatsune, Hatsune Miku. Ne. Not meh. Uh, ha Hatsume? <laughs> Hatsume. Like meh. No, it's ne. Hatsune Miku. It was that solitary truth that allowed me to hold on to my human emotions, to continue believing. I'm always waiting. My love will never fade. When I was still my old self, I called the master and would do anything for them. Michelle. That was their name. They were beautiful. They had pearly white hair and ruby eyes. They are going to come for me. Okay, please don't kill my flow. <laughs> oh no, all these beautiful images of them crossed out. You sure like her? Who? Hatsune Miku? Michelle. All I can remember about you is your name, your glassy white skin, your fiery red eyes, and your snow colored hair. Nothing else. And that's why, when I saw her that night, dripping from the storm raging outside, I thought, you're finally here. Because I didn't remember enough to know any better. You already know who I speak of, don't you? The person who called upon Rose Manor that fated stormy night. The girl with almost translucently pale skin, chillingly white hair, and eyes like jewels. Ah, like what a beautiful girl. Her hair, her eyes, her porcelain skin. It all matches the person in my memories. She must be the one I've been waiting for. If she is... Is something the matter? No, I just thought I felt someone watching us. Hehe, <laughs> it's only your imagination, I'm sure. If not your imagination, then perhaps some unseen force was watching you. Unseen force? Are you familiar with how people refer to this mansion? Rose Manor. Yes, indeed. It is called Rose Manor because you can smell the sweet fragrance of the Rose Garden even at a great distance. But that is not what I meant. It is said that a witch resides within the house. A witch? I have not heard any such stories. You probably wouldn't have. It was a very, very long time ago. Nothing you need concern yourself with. You have a peculiar presence about you. Should I consider that a compliment? Hehehe. <laughs> a peculiar presence, she says. Does she sense something in me as I do her? This has to be her, then. Her name. I need to ask her her name. It's getting late. You should get some rest. A room has already been set aside for you. But first, may I ask you one thing? Yes? I do not believe you've given me your name yet. My name? My name is... Michelle. <gasps> her name was Michelle. So what, was he like reborn as a girl? See, I don't know if this is if this is supposed to be like um, his soul, but the witch said that she would reconstruct him rather than uh, reincarnate him. So this 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 implies that this is reincarnation instead of reconstruction. This is the most heartbreaking story of them all. I mean, it's supposed to be right the last story. Ah, I knew it. You, you are the one. What? You are the one I've been waiting for. Um... 
I have endured so much in anticipation of this moment. So that I could reunite with you. Uh, um... You came to this place to see me again, did you not? Held tight to those wonderful memories until you could make it back to me? I never gave up hope. I always believed and I hope you'll praise me for that. And I ask you to please say my name. To please make me... Uh, um, I... I don't know anything about you. I'm sorry. You seem to be confusing me for someone. We have never met before now. Hehe, <laughs> you jest. You are Michelle, are you not? Th that is my name, yes, but it's a fairly common name. Surely you're confusing me with... That cannot be. The white hair, white skin, those red eyes, and that name. The name of the Archangel. Everything about you is the same. How can you say you're not my Michelle? Please, Michelle, remember for me. S stay away from me. Uh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude. Um, You would reject me? I'm so sorry. I honestly don't know you. Do you care nothing more for the time we spent together? We have not spent any time together. You would deny everything? I'm sorry. I see. I see. So you feel nothing for me anymore? You do not need to say anything. I understand. You are feeling a great deal of disgust toward me. N no, I... Or perhaps it is fear? Yes. You were always so kind. You would not easily allow yourself to succumb to hatred. I understand. Please, forget everything I have said. Who are you? I, I am... I am but a simple maid. Nothing more. Laughable, isn't it? I no longer recognized Michelle as nothing more than a concept. Man or woman, elderly or infant. As long as they had white hair, red eyes, and the right name, they were you. I needed anything I could get. I was so desperate the thought never even crossed my mind that she was not you. What do you think, seeing me like this, that I'm helpless and hopeless? Listen to this, Morgana. Michelle is back. She's finally come for me. But she does not remember anything, it seems. Not me, not our past, nothing. She saw me and was afraid, in fact. Are you listening, Morgana? Ah, darling devoted Giselle. You poor pitiful soul. That must have been quite harrowing. But don't worry, you still have me. Besides, this might not be your only chance. As long as you continue on, Michelle could appear before you again. Do you think she will remember me next time? I can't say. That's up to Michelle. You do have another option, though. Forget Michelle yourself and seek out a new master. Someone who can be yours. Someone dedicated and faithful who needs you. Someone worthy of this mansion. Someone who needs me? That's right. Michelle didn't need you after all. It's alright. Don't worry. You have plenty of time. What is this? Found it? Okay, I'll look at it. Uh, I'll look at it later on Discord. I don't remember this outfit. It's, kinda, it's a butterfly belt.
Are you talking about this soundtrack or are you talking about what you posted? I don't know what you posted, so I have no idea what it is. <laughs> well, I don't know what your link is. I, I'm not looking at it right now, so. So I don't- I have no idea what it is, like music, video, or whatever, so. I can look at it, um, later though. Everybody's Crying is the name of the current soundtrack? It's this music you're hearing in-game right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I see. Is that the, really the name of the soundtrack? <laughs> Everybody's Crying? Such a sad soundtrack name. It was raining again today. I I kind of wonder what happened to him after he fled from the mansion. Although, I suppose it doesn't much matter to me. The witch is surely watching him. Such a dreadful storm. It sounds like someone crying. Well, yeah, that's usually how it goes with the uh, soundtracks radio. They, they they usually issue a different name to each <laughs> to each um, song. So <laughs> I was at that point, completely out of my mind, broken. My f smiles, frowns, and gasps had all been replaced with imitations. Shortly afterward, a flaxen-haired boy moved out of the house and went on to become a priest. The girl fell ill a few years later, her disease eventually taking her life. But the boy never once returned home. The Rhodes family crumbled. I couldn't bring myself to grieve for them, or to reflect on Hayden's sorrowful end. I simply waited for the time to begin moving once more. When you said soundtrack? Yeah, soundtrack implies... The soundtrack itself doesn't have a name. Oh, okay. Hmm. It's the it's the the house in Fortune for Fata Morgana soundtrack. There you go. That's the that's probably the name of it. <laughs> unless the, the unless the music composed that they used in the game wasn't originally composed for the game. So, but I can't. It's that. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but uh, generally. Generally, most music for games are created specifically for the game. Little remains to be said about my broken self, but as I stated before we began, this is the maid's tale, so I would like to take this opportunity to elaborate on events I was unable to show you before. That is, if you can bear listening to such a dismal, miserable story. It was the beast story. I already told you of my meeting with the beast, so I will begin, with the, sec begin the second tale from here. After Bestia slaughtered the merchant, who slowed up, showed up at the mansion, his mad laughter echoing through the halls. <laughs> That's some crazy laughter there. Hey, <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear his screams? <laughs> he said I was a monster. <laughs> a mutilated body lay sprawled across the living room floor. As you can imagine, that was my first time ever seeing such a bloody, mangled corpse. I could not look directly at it, so I averted my eyes. Hey. Hey! You saw it! I just proved that beasts are stronger than humans. Indeed you did. Ah, uh, I know. I've got a great idea. You asked if I wanted to become the master, and I said I did. Which means you work for me, isn't that right? So you'll do whatever I tell you to do, won't you? What would you have me do? Chop up his arms and legs and make a stew out of them. And don't you hesitate, or you'll end up like him. Yes, master. Uh, I think it was made for this game, yeah, and it's amazing. 78 in total? Oh, that's a lot of soundtracks. Or, uh, like a lot. That's a lot of songs. Oh god, this turned dark. Um, I think we knew- I think we knew he was practicing cannibalism uh, from the second story when we were- when we were going through it. 
they they t they kind of touched upon that idea because he like murdered a bunch of people and I think ate bits of them. He's trying to assert his total dominance over me. That's not proper behavior for the master. Although I am the one who offered him the role. Do it. He's an utterly mad beast. But am I really all that different? Ah, there's blood all over my hands. It sounds like someone's laughing. Is it him or is it her? No matter what happens, it won't affect me. The cocoon is not the real me. I was looking down at what could only be described as a pile of human debris. I had done this, but that fact did not register with me. I felt nothing at all. No regret, not anger, not sorrow, or despair. Put it on fire, he said he traded in spices. Or, he said he traded in spices. That should give him a very unique flavor. How am I supposed to work with this? I was quite simply puzzled. No one had ever made such a request of me in my hundreds of years at the mansion. That's all I was. Puzzled. But he interpreted it as hesitation or fear. So he grabbed me on his shoulder, knocked me to the floor, and skewered me with that curious blade of his. For the first few moments, he wore that deranged grin of his, but as the seconds passed, it slowly transformed into shock. Not a drop of blood spilled from my breast, and the instant he realized it, I saw revulsion in his eyes. Him, of all people, a man who cackled as he slaughtered others, was disgusted by a mere maid. It was absurd. So much so, I almost wanted to cry. Oh, so that's kind of what happened, because I kind of wondered what happened to her when she kind of, like, disappeared from the mansion. Like, she stopped, like, servicing him, and she just was watching in the background. So he stabbed her. <laughs> he got mad and stabbed her one day. Hehehe. <laughs> you. Is that all, Master? Are you not going to dismember me? You could try stabbing my face, or my neck, or my stomach, or any other part of me. Maybe then I might die. Oh, now, don't look at me like I'm some exotic creature. <laughs> Stop that. Quit laughing. Why should I? My only distinctive feature is my smile. I have nothing else. My hands are covered in blood, but I can still smile. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I get it now. You're the witch, aren't you? Ah, I see. Only monsters ever had a place here. Every so often, I hear a woman's voice in my head. That's you, isn't it? You're the witch. Monster, witch, maid. What am I? Who is Giselle? Michelle said she was spirited, true to herself. And she often laughed and cried and shouted. Ooh. Distorted image. But I don't know anyone like that. I'm just a maid. Nothing more than a servant. The woman's voice he had said he heard was probably the real witch's. But I had no interest in that. I almost would have preferred not having to think about anything at all. Nothing would cause me to waver if my head was empty. A world without joy or sorrow sounds quite wonderful. But nothing ever went the way I planned, for the white-haired girl whom I thought I would never see again appeared before me once more. I was quite nearly in a panic. Beneath my perfectly practiced smile was a veritable storm of emotions. Faint hope flared up within my shell. Perhaps this time, Michelle would remember me. But that hope was unsurprisingly in vain. Who is this white haired girl though? They, they don't really quite, um... I guess maybe we'll eventually learn who she is. Like, why she keeps coming back to the mansion. Like, maybe she's part of the witch's curse? Is someone there? Yes, I came by to ask if there is anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything extravagant not like before, but I'm here to provide you with anything in my capacity. 
I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I've been here for a very, very long time. A very long time? Um, you might think this an odd question, but have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. And I get the feeling I have been in this mansion before. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time, though. When was it? I was, um... It was an unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and girl with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair? I apologize, my memory fails me. Do you not remember me either? I was afraid of this. She doesn't remember anything this time either. But I will not be so pushy this time. I will not bear to be so blatantly rejected again. Or I could not bear. I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember then. They were joyous times, and there were less than joyous times. But would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? My name? My name is... Michelle. White hair, red eyes, and the name Michelle. Why must you continue to bring me pain? Why can you not set me free as you were supposed to? I see. So you're Michelle again. Again? You should get some rest. I will make tea for you in the morning. Also. Go on. Close your eyes. The white-haired girl lay so quietly in her bed, I could not tell whether she was asleep or awake. Even the sound of her breathing was too faint to hear. Standing over her, looking down at her, the locked away despair and wails of lamentation I thought myself no longer capable of came bubbling back to the surface. But can you honestly blame me? I had been waiting for Michelle for so long. She was the one thing holding me up. She was the only thing keeping my broken self from falling apart completely. Yet she claimed not to remember me. Did you pity her, having to go through tragedy after tragedy? But every minute, she sh every time she showed up, she said she did not know me, bringing in more and more grief. I had been waiting for hundreds of years, waiting for her for so long, my mind slipping away with every passing day, waiting and waiting and waiting. Ah, um, my apologies. I have to be careful or I'll slip back to what I was then. If you weren't here holding my hand now, I... Tell me. You are Michelle, aren't you? That's a relief to hear. Yes, thank you. I'm alright. Do you think I'm as muddled as I feel? Let us return to the tale, then. You don't know what it feels like. You don't know how much it hurts for someone you waited so long for to say they don't know you. You have no idea how much it crushes me. Rather than feel like this anymore, maybe I should just... End it all with my own hands. I reached my hands out toward her slender neck. I was not an especially strong woman, but I thought even I would be able to suffocate her with relative ease. She was blind at that, so she wouldn't be able to run. <sighs> However, ah, uh, ah, uh, that was one thing I could not bring myself to do. I can't. I can't do it. Gr What a coincidence, my name is Michelle. <laughs> okay. I ran and I ran and I ran, though I knew I had nowhere to run, plunging myself into the mansion's darkness. I did not want to be there any longer. I did not want to have anything to do with her. But being an inhuman inhabitant of the house, I could not close my eyes or plug my ears to what happened within its walls as much as I may have wanted to. It didn't matter where I was, I had no say in the matter. I was forced to observe the events until their tragic conclusion. Twisted, bloody madness. The wretched wails creating a whirlwind of misery. When it was all over, Morgana cackled like a little girl. <laughs> Go on. You have a laugh too, my dear. There's nothing in the world better than this. He was a beast through and through. 
And what a fool he was to think he could become human. Ah, uh, I love it. He destroyed everything he had with his own hands, and then couldn't even manage to mourn for it. Quite the unfortunate fate, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Go on, laugh with me. Laugh with me, my darling devoted Giselle. Michel is dead too, though. You're worried about that tiny little detail? She'll show up again, of course. So you don't need to worry about a thing. You don't need to feel bad about any of this carnage. Rest easy, my darling devoted Giselle. If you say so, then I shall not be concerned. Hehe. <laughs> yes, that's good, laugh. Laugh, my dear. Ah ha 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 ha. Hehehehe. Hehehehe. Sorry, I took a bite. <laughs> Ha 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 I apologize for making you listen to my dreadful stories for so long. You must be quite weary of them right now. Or by now. But worry not, for this is the final one. I've heard this before then. This is the final story. <laughs> Inky, after 40 hours of fucking we're gonna. Let's see how many hours I've put into this game. Steam says 18.9 hours, so we're nearing the 20 hour mark. And despite being the end, it is neither dramatic nor exciting. It was a single phrase, the most insignificant of things, that caused me to completely lose myself and forget I had long ago been the woman called Giselle. There was no malice in it. Wait, so why is she saying this is the third story? Uh, and the time went to the 1800s, which would have been the the third story, where we had the the mean, the kind of uh, tortured mean um, master, who was like the the rich guy. I mean, he married into nobility, who was the who ended up being um, Michelle. The white-haired girl. So, we're, she's saying that she lost her mind here somewhere? It was but a simple greeting. You remember how, the first time she arrived, Michelle said I had a peculiar presence about me? She felt something there between us. Sorry, this uh, BG is actually really loud with singing. And the second time she says something about me seemed familiar. See, or, and the second time she says something about me seemed familiar. She did not remember why, but her soul recognized the bonds we shared. So I assumed that the next time she showed up, she would feel something even stronger, or perhaps even have her memories. Despite having been let down again and again, I still held on to the faintest glimmer of hope. But when she appeared, she was someone else's wife. Hey, hey, head maid, get out here. I am right here, sir. Is something the matter? I figured you should get to know her as soon as possible, since you'll be spending a lot of time looking after her. Hey, get out of here. Christ, there's not a goddamn confident bone in your body, is there? Uh, I I'm sorry, I'll be right out. The first thing she said when she saw me was, It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. What I had spent all that time waiting for. It was all for naught. It was all meaningless. In this era, she felt nothing at all for me. In retrospect, it makes enough sense, but for me at the time, that was the end. Aww. 
It's just, it's so like, it's so innocuous, uh, um, a greeting. And I guess the maid was hoping that she would say something more meaningful. So she always saw her soulmate being with someone else. Kind of, yeah. It's sad. It's so sad. <laughs> Morgana, Morgana, cast me into the darkness. Make me a formless being like you. I don't want to be here another second. I don't want to look at her ever again. Morgana, Morgana, please listen to me. I'm begging you. Now that the song's not over. That was quick. Now, now, what's the matter, my dear? It's not like you to throw a tantrum. I can't take it anymore. I can't do this. Michelle again. Oh, you poor thing. Betrayed three times now. Morgana. You pitiful girl. Don't groan like you're having a bad dream, my dear. I am here for you. Please, Morgana. Erase me from existence. If you go away, then I will be all alone. And that would be absolutely dreadful. But I... I... Tell me, what torments you sorrow, my dear? What? Michelle, who I've been waiting on for so long, doesn't... Oh, you poor thing. You've spent so long riding the currents of time that you've lost sight of yourself. What? You've convinced yourself that someone else's story is your own. Someone else's? Yes, indeed. It was such a beautifully tragic tale you fell in love with it. It resonated so deeply with you that you felt their pain as if it were your own. What are you talking about? I wanted to tell you, my dear, but you were so convinced it actually happened to you that I couldn't bring myself to take it away. Then, what about Michelle? She's not the one you're waiting for. And you are not hers either. Then, what about Giselle? That is not your name. Then, who am I? Who are you? Ah, <laughs> that's a very silly question. You are this mansion's cursed witch. I'm the witch? That you are. You are both the maid and the witch. But how? Do you truly believe that someone who has eternal life, who doesn't bleed when they're cut, and who can smile no matter what happens to her, isn't a witch? How much of this Giselle's memories do you actually possess, my dear? How clearly can you remember her life? You can't, can you? You don't know what kind of story Giselle and Michelle wove. And you wouldn't, because you are merely an onlooker. Much like you are now for this present tale. And by contrast, how much of the witch's story do you know? You should know it very well. Yes, but that's because you- No, my telling it to you is not the reason. The details are rooted deep within your memory. Then I'm- That's right. You are the cursed witch Morgana. But you- I am you. You split into two because you refused to accept who you were. Think about it. Have I ever shown myself to you? Have I ever shown myself to anybody? That's why I am. Or I am the witch that you are. <laughs> I see. It all makes sense now. Ah, uh, everything has fallen into place. There's one still- one thing I still don't understand, though. The story I was so enamored with, Giselle's and Michelle's story, what kind of story was it? Hehe. <laughs> I would be glad to tell you. You look like you're ready to know the truth. I believed every word she said. All my worries melted away like they were nothing. The sight of the white-haired girl no longer kicked up waves in my heart. In fact, I found myself wishing for her to find happiness. I was an observer, watching and hoping for the best. The tragedy that befell her did sadden me, but I felt bad for her like I would a character in the story. <laughs> Oh. 
I brought you your medicine, master. Thank you. Just set it down over there. Yes? What are you staring at? My apologies. I was simply musing about how much time has passed. I can hardly believe it has been 40 years since you were a bright young businessman. And you haven't aged a day. Why, thank you. <laughs> I am a witch after all. Well, I don't care but what you are. You could be the Grim Reaper for all I care. You still work harder than anyone else. May I ask you a question, Master? What is it? Why have you not returned to your homeland? I thought it was a place quite dear to you. I can't wait for her back there. Do you still believe she will return? To a degree, I understand how difficult it can be to wait. Though, for me, waiting now brings more joy than pain. With your lifespan, Master, it will be the pain that wins out. Perhaps you should consider letting go? Tell me, was her name really Michelle? Why, yes, it most certainly was. But why would you ask such a thing? Have you forgotten your own wife's name? You have waited so long that it would seem like me, some part of you, has begun to break down. You poor, poor man. You know, you look a whole lot more pitiful than me. Oh my. <laughs> oh, Jacobo ended up waiting for his, for the white haired girl. Wait, whoops. Um, oh, there you are. What has you in such a flurry, my dear? You are a noble servant. You must maintain your composure at all times. But, but, the, the master! What about him? He was found deceased in his chambers. The doctor just came out. He said it was his ailment, and it would seem the master knew his time was short, so, for he left a will, asking not to be given a funeral. I see. I feel kind of bad for him, though. Not only did he not have anyone by his side for his final moments, he didn't want to be sent off at all. Isn't that sad? It is for the best. There's not a single soul in this world left who could send him off. With your era drawn to an end, this mansion will soon return to existing nowhere in this world. I wonder what the next one will look like. I wonder if misfortune would befall her once more. That would be quite regrettable. Perhaps, if I could convince her of her tragic fate, she would be willing to disappear from this realm with me. And if she wishes to fight that fate, perhaps she will become my next master. Calling her master seems inappropriate, but I cannot think of a word that fits better. Hehehe. <laughs> I eagerly await the next era. Please, do not keep me waiting for long, master. My heart can only handle this much. Nobody wins here. Nope. Everyone loses. Time pressed onward, and then, at long last, you arrived. Oh, splendid! You have finally awoken. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Is she talking to an empty chair? She's talking to an empty chair. She went nuts. She's talking to an empty chair. I've simply been waiting so long for this moment. Tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, ensuring it was ready for your return. Master, whenever that time may be, when I caught sight of you through the window, my heart fluttered. The time had finally arrived. Oh my, you do not know who I am? Do you not know who you are, either? That is quite the predicament. Then, how about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that have taken place here. I shall show you the history of this house, Master. Let us be off, then, and fear not. I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, 
You mustn't let go of my hand. Oh, is someone there? A ghost? No matter what happens, no matter what you see, never again let go of this hand. That is everything. I prepared a number of things to say when she was finished with her tale, but I can't manage to put any of them into words. I almost hate myself for thinking it would be so easy, for letting myself hope. I could simply tell, pull her back to her old self, except whatever um, had happened to her. Take her hand in mine, and that would solve everything. The truth is so much worse than I imagined. So much more harrowing. She was subjected not only to her own terrible fate, but every single one of this house's tragedies. The tales she told me are things she witnessed with her own eyes. How can I possibly blame her for forgetting me? For forgetting herself? After so many hundreds of years. No, I should be. Why? Why didn't you come for me? Why couldn't I have returned before she was so far gone? Why? Why did you show up now? Giselle. Because you opened the door to my memories, I now remember everything. But I didn't want to remember. I didn't want to be reminded of all those empty years, about the people who passed on, leaving me behind, of you, who refused to show up no matter how much I begged. I'm not the Giselle you knew anymore. I may have my memories, but I cannot go back to that time. My hands were stained with blood, my soul worn thin. The girl who would laugh at the simplest things, who would tell silly jokes and wasn't afraid to speak her mind doesn't exist anymore. That Giselle is dead. How can you say I'm the same girl? How can you say I feel the same way I did? How can you be sure that even now I still love you? Can you deny the possibility that I no longer yearn for you, for the white-haired girl? Can you deny the possibility that my love for you has transformed into hate? She brings her hands up toward my throat and I make no attempt to move out of her way. When her fingers brush against my skin, they feel as frigid as death itself, far colder than anything I have felt from her thus far. If she were to wrap her hands around my neck, she wouldn't even have to squeeze to stop me from breathing. This is the fork in our road. One word will decide everything. I don't have much time. I have to say something before the cold robs me of my voice. deny it? I wanted to deny it. Oh wait. No! Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get a chance to click on it. Well, I'll save it. A moment of hesitation? Was it because I didn't click it fast enough? No! <laughs> I want to go back and load it, guys. But that would be like so far back. Hold on. If I load it, oh, it's so far back. That was like uh, an hour ago. Well, we can skip. Um, here, let's see how fast it takes to skip. We can't hesitate. We can't hesitate, radio. We must click right away. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, what I wanted to do, because I thought it was going to be like a choice there, and it was a choice, but I guess it was a timed choice. Is a timed choice. Let's see how long this skip takes. It's like even though it's skipping, it's like it still takes a while. <laughs> stay, stay sharp. Squish, squish. <laughs> Squishy noise. I never thought I'd have to save uh, more often. <laughs> I guess I should have saved a little more often. Squish. You thought we were friends? Okay, I'm gonna save here. 
I'm gonna lock this one. Actually, I, I'm gonna lock that one just in case. But I'm gonna lock this one as the this one's the bad ending, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe you don't have a choice. Maybe it just maybe it automatically Deny it. I wanted to deny it. She may have forgotten me, but what she felt still remains, as evidenced by her attraction to the white-haired girl, who had many physical similarities to me. Her feelings are still there. I sincerely believe that. But her arctic gaze caused me to waver for the briefest moment. Perhaps I only wanted to deny it for my own selfish reasons. It was only a few short seconds, but those seconds decided it all. Farewell, Michelle. She slides her slender fingers down my neck, then gently shoves me back. G giselle I'm falling, sinking into my own darkness. I reach my hand out, but I cannot grasp anything. Her hand, the hand I held for all this time, is so far away. I try to shout, but nothing comes out. I can neither answer her original question, nor say her name. Down and down into the infinite void. Darkness consumes everything. My voice, my hands, my very being, and her gaze. My consciousness slips away. Why? Why did I hesitate? I wish I could have at least told you that I still loved you, even if you did not love me. Just kiss her already. Ugh. No, all of this for nothing. Are you sure you really wanted to let him go? Yes, I'm sure. I see. I don't think I'll ever understand. If you hate someone, you should chain them down and torture them for all eternity. It was the perfect opportunity to trap his soul. I do not hate him. Oh, is that so, my dear? After everything you said, I simply assumed. I could never come to hate him. I could never want to see him dead or tortured. Oh, then what? Wait, damn it, why did it skip? Then why did you say what you did? I don't think you would understand. Probably not. I'm not particularly uninterested in understanding either. It doesn't matter what happened in the interim. In the end, nothing's changed, has it, my dear? You're still my darling, devoted maid. With enough time, you will once more forget your name. <laughs> what a wonderful world this is. Ending for a moment of hesitation. How many endings are there? If there's four endings, <laughs> at least four endings. I know. Wait, did I not click fast enough? Maybe. Oh, let's try this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, so we got one of the endings. There's there's multiple endings. No, no. Uh, this one, right? Load it. Oops. I have to be ready to click on it. Of course, I'll deny it. Okay, so you just had to click it real fast. Like, I thought I clicked it fast enough, but it still uh, counted as hesitation. Like, wow. <laughs> you have to click it super fast. Okay. I wonder if this will be like a, a better ending, because that other ending sucked. 
It's just like Giselle pushing him away, and that is it. Goodbye. While I was floating in the darkness, I heard a voice. Regrettably, it took me far too long to realize that it was your voice crying for help, calling for me. You may have lost hold on your old self, but somewhere deep down, you kept calling for me, which is how I found my way here. I refuse to believe that isn't real. I refuse to stomp on a love that survived for hundreds of years. By all means, hate me. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. I don't care if you spit bile at me for the rest of eternity. I will not let go of this hand, because you asked me not to. I could kill you right now. If that's what you want, then go right ahead. But I'll fight you with all I've got. Giselle. I've missed you too much to lose you again. I don't care if it makes you despise me. I don't care if you think I'm being inconsiderate. I want to save you. But, but I... I'm not the Giselle you once knew. I'm an abomination. My mind and body are twisted beyond recognition. I'm a disgusting monster. The woman you fell in love with does not exist anymore. So just forget about me. You are the one who should be saved, set free from me. You look the same to me. Your manner of speaking, your temperament, your physical appearance may all have changed. But you are still the same Giselle I love. <sighs> You should never have done anything for a foolish girl like me. You gave your life to save mine, and I hated you for that. I never once considered how you felt with those knights pointing their blades at you or what drove you to allow me to live. I should have, but I didn't. I was the one who trusted the witch, and yet I complained when you never showed up. I unfairly resented you for it. I... I'm a horribly self-centered person. You would be so much better off with someone pure and unburdened with all this nasty suspicion and doubt and animosity. You would be so much happier with someone like her. Giselle. Or uh, Giselle. You've been paying attention, haven't you? You were there for all the tales I told you. For everything that has happened up to this moment. So you should know just how loathsome a woman I am. Too weak to even keep herself together. No. Giselle. I'm nothing compared to her. Giselle. Gh. See? You haven't changed one bit. You still get louder and louder the more you lose your temper. I... Why do you feel the need to compare yourself to her? But because she's much better match for you. Giselle. I want you to listen every very carefully to what I'm about to say. I'm so sorry for keeping you waiting. And I want you to believe me when I say that I dearly missed you from the bottom of my heart. I wanted you back, and that has not changed. I... I... Believe me. I love you. I... I missed you so much, too. Ooh, it ch the name changed to Giselle instead of the maid. She leaps into my arms, and she's just as cold as ever. Her warmth's deprived body feels like the embodiment of all my mistakes. I wrap my arms around her, and I'm immediately filled with unparalleled relief. Even as she sobs into my chest, her body cold as ice. And then... The darkness parts. We are once more at the top of the observation tower. It's still shrouded in a miasma of shadows, but we're back in the mansion now. We have emerged from the darkness in her heart. Michelle. Yes? I'm sorry. For what? I never should have erased you from my memories. Yours are the memories I needed to hold on to the tightest. I was so glad to hear you say you still loved me, even after learning the truth about me. Thank you so much. I'm incredibly relieved. As I watched, it felt like you were slipping farther and farther away from me, Giselle. It terrified me. Maybe it makes me a coward, or pitiful, 
but I was truly afraid of you coming to hate me. I would never hate you, Michelle, ever. Thank you. We must leave this place. What? It would not be wise for us to remain here long. The air is still thick with darkness. But the front door won't open, and even if we could get out from somewhere, what would happen to us? We finally found each other again after so long. I want to share a quiet, modest life with you like before. What if all that disappears when we step outside? After all, we are... She doesn't finish, but I feel like I know what she was going to say. We're different now. She's... She stepped far outside the bounds of mortality. And the same could be said of me. I am... The man known as Michelle is... Long since dead. The mansion itself does not follow the rules of nature either, as beings no longer in possession of their proper forms. Stepping outside these walls could very well mean the end of us. I can't say what might lie in store, but we must return. Even though by staying here, we could be together for all time? I don't imagine that would be a very happy life. There's no sun here, no chirping birds, no trees or a breeze to rustle the leaves. If we stay here, the nothingness will eat away at us. We have finally reattained our old selves. We need to take action now while we can. What if I say I want to stay here? Then I'll drag you out. Hehe. <laughs> it's almost like we switched places. Back then, it was you who wanted to stay. It's also kind of funny hearing you speak favorably of the outside, and especially the sun. The words, it's all thanks to you, are on my lips, but before I can say them, I find myself hypnotized by her smile. That smile has picked me up so many times. She claims it's her only redeeming feature, but if she didn't have it, my life would have gone in a very different direction. I'm grateful to have gotten that back too. Say, um, we're in the middle of a very, uh, touching reunion, wouldn't you say? I suppose so, yes. And wouldn't you say, there's a certain way these things usually go? Huh? Ugh, are you really going to make me say it? I was, um, hoping you might, perhaps, kiss me? What? What? Oh, seriously, what? Where did all that boldness from a second go? What happened to all that momentum you were building? Uh, yeah, about that. I think that might be more appropriate later. Later? How much later? After we find an exit. We're, you know, in a hurry. You're just making excuses because you don't want to. I swear that's not it. G Giselle, let's save that for when things aren't as crazy. I can't relax and enjoy it right now. What are you, twelve? Oh, hush. Alright, fine. But you'd better keep your word, got it? Promise. Let's go, then. Let's find our way out of the mansion. There, our frozen time should begin moving again. That's hopefully where our future waits. It will be. No, we'll make it so. Yes, we will. If we leave the mansion, it should release our souls as well, and in doing so, should finally provide her deliverance. So I mustn't hesitate. To end all of this for both of us, we must start again. This is where we... What? Darkness. It's a blackness purer than anything I've experienced in this house. Not a trace of light anywhere to be found. Why did I ever think the house would let us go so easily? Why did I ever think our time in the darkness was over? Michelle! Ugh. The darkness surges through the open door like a wave flooding the observation tower, like ivy growing wildly to cover every last inch of every surface, consuming, defiling, eroding. Our fingers slip apart, and concentrated rancor rains down upon us. Ah. Uh. How hideous a world this is. Ah, oh, no! M Michelle! 
Please, please. Don't let go of my hand. Giselle. Michelle. I said I would never let her go again. I said I would let her get her out of this place. I swore I would. But as hard as I try to stretch, I can't reach her hand. Help! Michelle! I, I can't move! I can't move my body! I went out of my way to give you a beautiful tragedy. So why must you so stubbornly insist on this ugliness? The more you struggle, my dears, the thicker and more palpable your filthiness becomes. Ah, uh, it's sickening. Wouldn't you agree? She's always spat her bile with song-like cadence. Singing like a little girl, chirping like a morning bird. She celebrates misery, and she watches for the worst possible moment to let out a cackle. Morgana! Oh, is that supposed to be Morgana holding on to, uh... Giselle? I swear, you two are hopeless. I pity you. I give you my deepest condolences. Let go! Let me go! Don't! Don't take me away from him! <laughs> Giselle! The darkness seeping into her grew thicker by the moment and its black tendrils weren't just wrapped around her, but me as well. Stop this Morgana, let her... let her go? Ah, uh, wow, nothing more original. I need a devoted puppet to protect this mansion for me, so I can't give her up, not at even at your request. Besides, why should I give back something you threw away? Something you abandoned again and again? What are you talking about? You still haven't figured it out, my dear? Or are you just feigning ignorance for your own convenience? You always did like to withhold anything that might prove disadvantageous. Michelle! <clears throat> Giselle, give me your hand. Reach harder. Reach as hard as you can. Grab, grab my hand. I can't, I can't do it. It's like, it's like I'm tied up. I can't move at all. Gah. She's right there. She waited so many hundreds of years for me, finally managing to reclaim yourself, and she's right there. So why can't my hand go any further? Why can't I reach her wrist, her hand, or even a strand of her flowing hair? Why can't I get her back again? Michelle! Her voice is growing fainter, more distant. The darkness shrouds her, taking her away from me. Her arms, her fingers, the hands she led me with, her smiling face, her once glowing grin, and her now more modest smile. The witch's darkness is stealing every last bit of her. Michelle! Help! Stop! Please don't do this! Take me instead of her! Why does it have to be her? Why her? Morgana! Why? Because your work is done, my dear. By all accounts, as the one who resurrected me, you should have become my guide as well. But you let a silly woman emotionally manipulate you, and you gave up on crushing others. And then you threw away your life deluded into thinking you were protecting her. Morgana, you already gave up the position once. Don't think you can just walk up and ask for it back. Set her. Set Giselle free. I'll do anything you ask. If you need a puppet, I'll be your puppet. If you want more from me, it's yours for the taking. But I, I can't leave her to remain in this cursed house any longer. You certainly have let your obsession for this girl take its toll on you. I much preferred the old, pessimistic, cynical Michelle. It wasn't until I met Michelle that I truly became human. She made me into what I'm supposed to be. I can't lose her again. Is that so? Well, 
You'll come to the harsh realization soon enough that everything you saw in her was just a facade. It was not. Hehe, <laughs> alright then. If you want her back so badly, you can have her. But in exchange, I want you to entertain me. With, Will you endure maddening agony for me? Will you know pain enough to make you howl? Will you face despair again and again and again? If you need her that badly, you can bear anything, can't you? If that is what you want from me. If that will allow her to see the sun once more. <laughs> Brilliant. Wait, Morgana! Morgana! As you wish, foolish boy. I was looking for a way to keep busy anyway, so I'll use you to kill some time. Find your way to me, my dear. Find your way to me without going mad or succumbing to despair, and do hurry, or she might lose her mind again. Those memories you forced her to relive? Those hundreds of years she spent locked away in her shell? All that fear that ate away at her. It's a bit much to have to reflect on with clear mind, wouldn't you say? That's why I need to be there for her. Why I have to get her out of here. That's my obligation to her. You're the one who let go of her hand, though. Hehe. <laughs> you can put up a broken cup back together, but the slightest tap in the wrong place will shatter it again. <laughs> Morgana! The witch's cackling fades into the distance. My outstretched hand is completely env en enveloped in the shadows. I can't even make out the faintest outline of it. And I can't tell if I'm sinking, floating, being pushed along some invisible stream, or falling with incredible speed. My eyes are open, but they can detect nothing. The complete lack of sound is almost painful. Nothing, anything, anywhere, void. My con consciousness begins to drift. Vague remnants of the feeling of her hand and mine are the only link to reality, my one and only landmark. Giselle, I must get her back. She waited, enduring for hundreds, no, almost a thousand years, and now it's my turn to act. I have to hold that resolve so that I never forget her again, so that I never lose myself again, even if I'm consumed by that darkness. You must never back down. You must never look away. You must never lose her. No, oh, no, I, I only have like 10 minutes left, guys. <laughs> The house in Fata Morgana. What? The story behind the story? Wait, is there another story? <laughs> Did this unlock another story? <laughs> no! Hey, Master. Hello? Is anyone in there? Master? I think I might have to end it here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to end it here, because uh, I don't think this is gonna end anytime too soon. Uh, save it here. But I guess this, this was the hesitation, the moment of the hesitation ending, so we got that already. But yeah, I'm gonna call it there. I think that's a good spot to pause the story. It seems like there's a lot more. <laughs> I thought for certain that there was going to be an ending, but I guess I was just like, one of the, the fourth ending is just like a shorter uh, story, and that's why. I've really enjoyed it. That's good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> but we'll have to see what happens next. The next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> just kidding. Um, let's see if I can, um, let's see if we can, uh, quickly raid somebody. Tangent Turner is playing some Minecraft, so maybe, maybe we, we, we can raid into something a little more cheerful. Thank you, thank you, it cleared my mind. Oh, were you feeling kind of fuzzy? Well, I'm glad that you feel clear now. How long has he been going on? For an hour? Okay. Here, let's... I'll, let's go... 
enjoy some uh, um, chill Minecraft. I'm always kind of fuzzy. Are you taking medication? I think I re recall you saying you were taking medication. Is it possibly a side effect of that? And when my head is clear, it feels great for as long as it lasts. Well, I'm, I hope that it lasts for a good long while when you feel clear. But uh, thanks for thanks for hanging out, Radio, uh, for seeing this to this part of the story. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say it. I, I'm not gonna say that we're we're so close to the end. It just always seems to keep adding more to the story. So I guess we'll see what happens next. Um, I don't know when I want to play this next though. Maybe if I'm feeling like particularly like energetic, I'll maybe I'll continue more tonight. Uh, no promises though. Um, because I've basically done my stream for today. <laughs> so... Maybe I'll play it tomorrow morning. If I don't, if I don't stream tonight, I'll, I'll probably, I'll probably, uh, do it tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. My morning. So I'd have to watch the VOD? Oh, uh, you mean tonight? Okay. Well, then I'll probably then play it tomorrow morning then. Tomorrow morning? Sounds good. Alright, same time, same place, everybody. Alright, uh, so thank you again, guys, for hanging out in tonight's today's stream. Uh, have a great good evening, or a great rest of your day, wherever you guys are in the world. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye!